The girl ignored people clicking on something in her smartphone, which took all her attention. It was important to her. She stood with her back to the window while those who had more things to do during their breaks than the girl passed by. She sent the post to the forum by pressing a button. Locking the phone screen, she looked at her reflection. But the silence did not last long. Soon notifications of comments under the post began to pour in, and the girl herself read everything, looking at the screen attentively. She turned her head to the side to distract herself from what she was writing. She didn't really like what she was reading, because that was not the point of her post. Taking a breath, she lowered her hand with the phone clutched tightly in it. With her free hand, she reached into another pocket of her skirt, rustling the fabric as she searched for something. A few seconds later, she pulled out another phone, this one in pink which reflected another part of her personality. Holding it in her hand, she opened the lid of the phone, thinking about the injustice of the world. The lid opened with a soft click, immediately drawing her attention to the screen. The girl watched, pointing the camera of her pink phone at those who passed by. She did not take her eyes off what she was seeing. The numbers appeared one by one, showing information about passers-by. And again, the number is so small, but there is so much potential love that a person could receive. Everyone who was in the camera's field of view had two numbers in front of them. The first was the number the person would receive, and the second was the potential number they could receive. These were the numbers of love that a person would receive in their entire life. Sometimes the numbers were small, sometimes they were bigger, but none of them ever reached their maximum. Her eyes sparkled. It was only her ability, only she could see these numbers. Almost without blinking, the girl looked at all the passers-by through the camera of her phone, scanning everyone who passed by. Here's a guy looking at his phone, indifferent to the girl standing next to him. She looks at him with loving eyes and holds his forearm while he is indifferent. Pointing the camera, she began to scan them both. He had a little more, and that girl who didn't even get attention had as little love as she would receive in her entire life. Without even looking at her, the guy stuck his hand out of his pocket, snatching it from the girl's hands. He still paid almost no attention to her, looking at his phone and talking about being busy. Stopping in her tracks, the girl looked in the wake of the guy she was in love with. It was clear that she was uncomfortable with the situation, where he was walking away, laughing at something on his phone and leaving her alone. Once again, the camera focused on how much love the girl received and left. Too little. But unfortunately, it was impossible to give as much as you receive in this world. It was just like children born with a golden spoon in their mouths. It was predetermined how much love everyone would receive. The girl with the pink phone was passed by a guy just like him. The same golden spoon almost glowed above his head. He was popular and successful. She understood that beauty is the basis of popularity and, as a result, love and adoration. The body, the appearance was all that mattered. No one paid attention to the personality that was under these layers of the visible. She saw how popularity changed the guy who left his girlfriend and didn't even look back. They were too different and received too many different numbers of love. Popularity is an innate trait, according to her logic. Every heartbeat was transmitted by the camera, while the girl with this phone continued to think that everyone in the world loves and is loved in return. Their hearts gave love, receiving a different amount than would have been equal. Finally, the girl turned to the side, moving her legs to turn to the right. She took a photo of herself with the front camera of her pink phone, turning so that the sun was shining on her and the photo was beautiful. Looking at herself on the screen, she thought that if she equated love with ability or wealth, she was quite poor. She pointed the camera again, pouting her lips, but the number didn't change. There was still no one nearby. She lowered her head and looked at her phone screen, turning away from the crowd. She was exhausted, now looking out the window. The phone was telling her that she would never receive love in her entire life. Not at all. The girl clutched the phone in her hand. She was outraged that she had zero. It couldn't be. She looked out of the window, thinking that it was impossible not to fall in love with someone during her long life. She turned her gaze to her phone, still thinking about her life and the love that was foreseen. Putting the phone in her skirt pocket, she turned around and went to class, no longer thinking about love. She opened the door to the classroom, immediately noticing her friends with whom she had been talking at school. Sitting at the same desk, the three girls turned to Shim Su, almost ordering her to give them a phone so they could take some selfies. Holding out her hand, one of the girls waited for the phone to be in her hand. While everyone was going about their business and the girls were taking photos on her phone, 
Sue looked at them with envy. They were popular, they had a lot of love. One of the girls had a duck shape to her lips, and the other had huge, sweet eyes. They both looked very sweet and beautiful. The three girls were looking through the photos, choosing the best ones out of the million they had already taken. One of them was thinking about changing her phone, because the photos were so good. The third girl, when she returned to Sue, wrote down whether she had switched to Jelly Pop to study. The other two friends didn't hesitate. Their attention was now on Sue, and they were also curious why she was using that old phone if she had a smartphone. Zhu was puzzled and did not know what to say. She looked at her friends, betraying her nervousness after being asked the question. But the girls seemed to believe the story that she was tired of the old phone. At least they looked like they were almost indifferent to her answer. One of the girls picked up the phone, pointing it at Kang Ah Jin, the same brunette who had asked about Jelly Pop and asked her to smile. And while the girls were playing with the photo, Shim Su kept looking at her smartphone in her friend's hands. She held it in such a way that the corner of the photo glued to the phone's cover was bent. Sue was angry about it. She watched the photo deteriorate in her friend's hands. She didn't like it. With a sharp movement, she snatched the phone from the girl's hands, surprising her and receiving a cry of indignation. Zhu was looking at the lid of her smartphone, almost crying. It was evident in her expression and eyes, which were already welling up with tears. The next second, the tears still flowed, and she clutched the phone tighter in her hand. The photo was crumpled, not the same as before. The two friends looked at the third one in surprise, while she kept her eyes on Shim Su Ai. She didn't understand what had just happened. Her boyfriend and a part of her sister's face were visible in the photo, but Sue herself was in the corner that was bent over. After correcting him, the girl looked at the happy photo of her, her sister, and the boyfriend. He was even smiling, which was a rarity for him. She was still looking at the photo, sniffling and crying. Even though he wasn't the perfect partner, she loved him. It was her favorite photo. Zhu folded her arms across her chest, looking with some resentment at what was unfolding before her eyes. Kang Min Wu, her boyfriend, was standing with another girl, laughing at a joke and putting his palm on her head, a gesture that signified his sweet attitude. Shim Su ate a rather tasty lunch, eating rice at her own pace and taking her time. However, the next moment Minu rose from his seat, forcing her to leave the spoon by her mouth as she looked at him in confusion. He turned around and, without saying a word, walked away with his tray to carry it away and go about his business. Sue called him, saying that she had not yet finished eating, but it was always in vain. He was already hugging his friend with one arm, talking to him about something, and ignoring the fact that his girlfriend hadn't finished eating yet. This was exactly the type of guy Kang Min Woo was. After the bell rang from class, the girl quickly started packing her things to meet Minu as soon as possible. They had so many plans for today. She ran up to the boy, telling him that the lessons were over and he could go. However, as usual, he did not smile and looked at her as if she was in the way. Still, smiling to smooth out his next words, Minu said that he needed to go to an internet cafe right now. Sue was disappointed and a little angry. They had agreed to go for a walk together today. She was really looking forward to it. But Minu simply patted the girl's head like a small child, smiling almost imperceptibly and indulgently. He turned his head to wave goodbye, saying that Sue could go for a walk on her own, but he had to go. She could only look at the guy's back with displeasure and obvious resentment as he went about his business without even consulting her. The next day, everyone was playing football in gym class. Kang Min was busy playing and shouting for the ball to be served to him. The girl was looking at her boyfriend and thinking to herself, blushing a little, how cool and cool he was, not even seeing the ball coming at her from the other side. And then she felt the impact, lurching backwards from the force of the blow and falling on her side on the bench where she had been sitting. Minu immediately ran in her direction, shouting at the guy who had thrown the ball and hit his girlfriend in the head. It was obvious that he was angry. Seeing his reaction, Zhu began to call him by name with tears in her eyes as she was moved by his emotions. But the guy ran past, not even paying attention to the fact that his girlfriend was in pain and that she was looking at him hopefully waiting for him to at least ask how she was doing. But the next moment after he ran past, Minu started shouting at his classmate that they had lost. He didn't care if Shui was feeling well. She looked back at the stage where her boyfriend was beating his teammate for losing, feeling only anger that was almost written on her face. Later that day, 
Shimsu looked at Kang Min with loving eyes because he noticed that she hadn't eaten anything today and brought her a strawberry yogurt. The girl was overjoyed because he had taken care of her. She looked at the yogurt carton as if it were something incredibly valuable and expensive, immediately hugging the boy. She didn't notice the other girls in the class whispering as they watched the scene. The girls said that Sue had no sense of dignity and that she was too dependent on the boyfriend, which is why she was happy even when he brought her yogurt out of pity. The girls whispered, the boy smiled, and Min's friend Inhak witnessed the discussion and even turned his head when the table was laughing quietly. As she placed the yogurt on the desk, Shim Suye stared at it, probably forgetting to blink. She was over the moon that her boyfriend had taken care of her. But the next second, someone just unceremoniously took the yogurt off the table, causing a puzzled look to cross her face. What was going on? The girl's classmate just laughed at her expression and attitude towards ordinary yogurt, so he defiantly started drinking it, because he didn't think she was going to. Sue jerked up, shouting at the boy and calling him names to give her the yogurt. But he only took a swing because he was angry that he had been called that, even though he had behaved exactly as he had been called. Unworthy. But someone intercepted his hand, grabbing it by the wrist and squeezing it hard. Chulmin was surprised and nervous that no one had been in the classroom before, and no one could have witnessed their fight. And now he might get in trouble. It was Go in Heck, asking if he was really going to hit the girl because of what had happened seconds earlier. He looked directly into Chulmin's eyes and his own were full of determination. The boy put the yogurt back on the desk, taking it out of the hands of the still surprised and now more frightened bully. Sue looked at the yogurt and thought about how embarrassed she felt. Not just because he said that many people would be upset by the scratches on her face, but in general. She thought about how Inhak was Min's best friend, but she still felt awkward around him and that never changed. When her own boyfriend left her without even looking at her, Inhek watched. He always turned around when his friend behaved badly, but never said anything. Sue always looked in the boy's wake, feeling hurt and abandoned, and always saw the same thing. The look Inhek gave her, his head turned to the side. He didn't need to say anything. Even while talking to Min, who didn't notice that he had insulted his girlfriend again, Inhek kept looking at Suje, turning his head so that she could see his gaze. And now he was looking at her the same way, the way he looked at a person he pitied because he felt sorry for them. Now, sitting on the bench after P.E., one hand on Min's forearm, Shim Sujay thought about what she would never have thought would happen to her and Inhek. He was sitting next to her, drinking water, and she could feel his fingers next to hers, how they were slowly getting closer. Until their fingers intertwined like people in love with each other, she never imagined that she and Inhek would have an affair until that day. Sue remembered looking at the yogurt on the table, the same one that Mina had brought. She was surprised by the situation in the classroom. It was written all over her face. Inhak put it on the table, taking the yogurt out of Chulman's hands, who was about to drink it to spite the girl. And then she watched the two boys walk out of the classroom as if she didn't exist. They were friends. Sue clutched the yogurt in her hand, not understanding what had just happened. She took apart the phone she had, the same jelly pop that showed the amount of love. Inside was a memory card with a heart on it, but that was the only difference. It was three weeks ago. It was already dark outside, but it wasn't too late. The girl looked with disappointment at the empty chip packet, which she thought was supposed to be full. The shops were still open, and the one next to her house was the one where she used to buy something tasty and always had her chips. Sue was already on her way home, pulling the hood of her hoodie up and putting her hands in her pockets. Under her arm, she held the coveted packet of chips she had left home for. But she stopped staring at herself in surprise. Rain was there, right in front of her, talking to her friends about something. Without thinking for a second, Zhu waved to her sister and called her name. She had a joyful expression on her face because she loved her half-sister so much. At first, she only noticed her sister with a glance, because she had attracted attention quite loudly. Yuraim smiled as she turned to her sister, and saw that she had gone out to get some chips. Sue asked if they had also come for something tasty, and if their break would end soon. She was so happy to see her sister that she didn't even notice the others with her at first. Taking off the hood of her hoodie, Sue asked if she should meet her sister, as she would probably be late. But Raim said that everything was fine, poking a guy standing next to her in the stomach with her elbow and telling him to walk her home. For the first time, Shui noticed the man standing next to her, she looked up at him. She could not believe her eyes. 
It was Go and Heck, smiling at her sister while glaring at her. They have the same tutor. He looked completely different now than he always did when Sue was around. He looked at Sui now as she had caught his attention enough. He looked down at her defiantly, looking into her eyes, to what had attracted his attention in Sue's appearance. She stood there in astonishment, not understanding what was happening and why he was looking down. Then she looked down as well, examining herself and her appearance and noticing why he was looking at her like that. She had come out in her home clothes. Immediately, Sue's posture was a little different. Her embarrassment at her own clothes betrayed her. Blushing, she started pulling strands of hair that fell on her face, having fallen out of the hairpins she used to pin up her hair. The girl looked at what was in front of her eyes, immediately noticing something interesting. Go in Heck was smiling sweetly, and Yu Ram was laughing at his joke. He definitely liked her. It was obvious to the naked eye. Sue thought it was unexpected that he liked her, but her sister was popular with the boys. Many of them liked her. In fact, my sister was wonderful. She studied well, looked good, and was nice to everyone around her. She also thought that Raim had a lot of friends, which was also good, although some of them were somewhat frightening to Sue. The younger sister was beautiful. She attracted attention even when she was talking about something insignificant, just to talk. And while she was talking, Sue looked at her and thought that she was not exactly younger, and that things were a bit complicated in their family. Laughing at her sister's joke, she thought about the fact that they are half-sisters, and that in their family there is no such thing as younger and older, because they are the same age. They always sat down to eat when they got home, as they did that day. But while Sue was looking in the fridge, her sister dropped her briefcase and went out. On the wall was a photo of a happy family, Sue, her mother, who had married Raim's father, and of course, Raim herself. Raim turned around when her sister started shouting for an answer, she asked her what she was asking because she couldn't hear her through the closed bathroom door. With a guilty smile, as if her sister could see, Raim said she would not eat because she was already brushing her teeth. While Sue was eating, she thought that her sister would be the main character if they were in an online novel. Looking towards the bathroom, she thought that her sister would most likely be a good ex-girlfriend for the protagonist. Biting into her dinner on a stick, Sue realized that the main characters were unremarkable and ordinary girls like herself. One day, lying on the bed with a cucumber on her face and a beauty treatment, Raim told a story about herself. It turned out that her father had run away as soon as he found out her mother was pregnant. Sue looked at her sister, listening to her mother's story of how she had worked hard to raise Raim, and then one day had a car accident and died. And while Raim was talking about how her heart was breaking with pain at the memory of her mother, Sue turned her head towards her, not caring about the cucumbers on her face that had spilled on the bed. She was surprised, her heart filled with the same longing as Raim's, and she continued to speak, saying that she blamed herself for her mother's death because she had caused her so much trouble. Sue hugged her half-sister with a sudden movement, closing her eyes and forcing her to interrupt her story. She didn't know it, but Raim was looking at what was happening in surprise, Shimsu recalled that Raim did not cry when telling her about herself and her life story, but Sue herself cried, and her sister stroked her back, trying to calm the flow of tears as Sue sobbed over her words. Hugging each other, they fell asleep in the same bed, and after that evening there were no more secrets between them. Now, looking at her sister and boyfriend, she thought that Inhak must not have confessed his feelings to her yet, because she would have told her. Meanwhile, Go in Heck mockingly talked about how kind Raim's younger sister was, how she cared and worried about her. As Sue thought about why he thought she was younger, silence fell around her. No one stood up for her, and no one laughed at his mockery. She was puzzled when he joked about her age and that she was probably in high school. He started laughing very loudly, surprising Shu even more and making him feel even more embarrassed. The other girl looked at him without a shadow of a smile scolding Inhek for laughing too loudly and telling him to keep his voice down, and saying that Sue was in the same class as him. Shim Su Jae was embarrassed and angry, because he was really too cruel in pointing out her appearance. He looked at her without a shadow of a smile, saying that he did not recognize her with the hairstyle she had on her head. While everyone else was laughing as they stood in front of her, Su He thought that Go In He was unbearable. The next day at school, after work, the teacher's voice was heard in the classroom. He said that the duty officer was collecting notebooks and should bring them to the teacher's room. 
Sue diligently counted her classmates' notebooks to make sure that everyone had handed in their work. She realized that one notebook was missing, so she looked up to see who hadn't handed in their work yet. And of course, there was Go in Heck sitting in front of her, writing diligently, not paying attention to anything around him. Even though she called him, he sat there as if he hadn't heard her. He was busy working. He just kept writing in his notebook, doing the task given by the teacher, listening to music in his headphones or something. Sue was outraged. He was sitting with one earpiece on, hearing her perfectly, but not responding to her calls. How rude. Taking all the notebooks off the table, Sue took them towards the door and called out to Inhaik again to pick up the notebook. But everything fell to the floor. All the notebooks were scattered because the girl tripped over herself, because she could not see where she was going because of the mountain of paper in her hands. She was furious that this had happened, because she could have been more careful herself. As she was collecting her notebooks and thinking that she didn't like the guy at all, she heard a voice behind her saying that Go In Heck never answers when he studies. When she returned, she was surprised. Was she really supposed to know this? Especially since she was advised to go to him and repeat it, as if she was supposed to know all these details. At the surprised look of the girl who had spoken about In Heck a few seconds earlier, Sue turned and left the classroom, saying that he could bring the notebook in later himself. As she was bringing in her notebooks and opening the door to the teacher's room to leave, she ran into a boy who was about to enter. She looked at Guo Inhek, who was standing right in front of her, holding his notebook in his hand and staring back silently. Sui glanced at the notebook, thinking that it was a setup, as if he hadn't handed it in on purpose, and she should have been forced to confront him at the door. She began to justify herself, looking guilty and saying that she had called him, but he did not answer. Completely ignoring her, Inhek walked into the teacher's room without even listening to what she was saying. Sui stopped talking in mid-sentence, Wondering what had just happened, he completely ignored her as if she didn't exist. She walked away pacing angrily, thinking that it was her fault, wasn't it? After all, he hadn't heard her and hadn't listened. The next morning, the students came to school, greeting each other at the gate and walking up the stairs to their classrooms. Raim adjusted her skirt, wondering if it was too long. The three of them stood there. Sue, Raim, and Minu, who was looking at his phone and not paying attention to his girlfriend. It was annoying her. The sister smiled as she finished fixing her appearance. She was pleased with herself and the fact that she looked great. But the next moment she stopped smiling, remembering something. They had left their ties at home. Xu started to scold her sister for taking more care of her tie than her skirt, but as soon as she realized, she stopped talking. They stared at each other without saying a word when Minu finally looked away from the phone and now looked at both sisters. Then he waved to them, wishing them good luck in their studies. The girls looked after him and were unhappy with his manners. Sue was thinking that today was also a student appearance check when someone nudged her in the shoulder as she passed by. She really didn't want to work off her unsatisfactory appearance in the gym, remembering physical activity with horror. A guy passing by looked back, his attention drawn by Sue's words. It was Go Inhek. He looked at Shue, who had bent down so that she was even shorter, apologizing for hitting her as he passed. She and her sister both looked at the boy, one with interest and the other with surprise. He asked why they weren't coming in, and while Rain was answering, Sue was thinking that not only had she met Inhek, but she had to work out in the gym. But it was the boy who caught her attention. She watched in amazement as he took off his own tie until her sister kept talking about the test and everything. Sue watched in amazement as the guy held out his hand with the tie in his palm, handing it to you, Rain. She was also puzzled by his actions, looking at him and asking how he was doing and hearing that he was going to do a little gym anyway. Wishing her sister an in heck success, Raim smiled as she put on her tie and was about to leave. They both stared at the back of Raim, who was disappearing into the school, and Sue thought to herself what had just happened. Shimsui could barely stand on her feet, leaning against the door. She was one of the last to finish, so she ran three more laps, and now her body was shaking with exertion. She opened her locker to get her clothes. She didn't look very well, but she didn't fall, and she stumbled. But all her worries faded into the background when she opened her locker and saw what was in it. She was very surprised. A pink phone was waiting for her on the shelf, or, to be more precise, a jelly pop. She picked up the phone and looked around, wondering what the push-button phone was doing in her locker and if it was in hex. She was about to call out to her classmate, 
but fell silent when she received a message on her phone, immediately looking at the screen. Sue was puzzled, wondering if it was for her because the text had said to look in the gallery. She had a suspicious feeling. She was even more surprised, glaring loudly when another text described her haircut and recommended that she take a look at the gallery. The girl still obeyed and started clicking on her phone, going to the place where the unknown person asked in his text message. As soon as she started flipping through the photos, her eyes rounded, showing the full extent of her surprise. What the hell? Here she is looking in the wake of her boyfriend, who is the image of a best friend instead. And in another photo, Minu also chooses others, telling her about an internet cafe instead of a walk. Another photo showed her sitting on a bench when she was hit by a ball, and Kang Minu attacked a classmate because they lost, ignoring Sue. The girl continued to look at the photo, wondering what it meant and who took it and why. But the next moment, she was interrupted by a girl asking if that was Inhex's phone that Sue was holding. She was startled, asking again, because she was so shocked by the sight that she hadn't heard. Without answering any questions, Shim Su turned around and walked away from the girl, clutching her phone and looking very determined. She distracted Go Inhek by sliding the open phone in front of him and catching his attention. Calling him crazy, Sue definitely got the guy's attention, now asking what it all meant. And while she was asking about the photos, he was looking at the phone in confusion and could not understand what was happening and what they wanted from him. When he asked her what she meant, Zhu turned red with anger and clenched her teeth. She started to say that he was secretly taking pictures of others, but stumbled when she saw that the gallery was completely empty. Sui was now puzzled herself. Not only was the gallery empty, but she was also receiving texts telling her to keep quiet about what the person sending these messages was doing. She looked at her phone screen in dismay as it made a sound like the game was lost, and the same mark appeared on the screen. Was it really not go in hack? If so, then who was it? He looked at her in surprise, asking if she had also changed her phone to Jelly Pop like he had. She stared at him, puzzled, not understanding what had happened and whether he really had nothing to do with the phone. The classmates whispered as they returned to the stage that Shim Suai had set up, not understanding why she seemed to have gone mad. And she was completely confused. Was it really go in hack in his phone? Then whose phone was it and who was playing a game of cryptic games with her? While the teacher was writing the assignment on the board, the girl was biting her nails, thinking about the situation and who the person who had planted the phone and taken the photos really was. She was still so furious that Sue punched the desk where her notebook was lying. It was very suspicious that the photos had disappeared from the phone for a second. The phone, hidden in the niche of the desk, alerted him to a new message, attracting unnecessary attention. The girl looked at the photo of the teddy bear keychain she had given to Minu, which was lying lonely somewhere. When she saw the photo and read the messages calling her poor, Sue stared at the photo and couldn't believe it. She immediately decided to check it out and turned to the side where her boyfriend was sitting. Kang Min Wu was sitting a little further away at his desk, listening boredly to the teacher and paying no attention to anything around him. There really wasn't any sign of a teddy bear on his briefcase. Sue recalled bringing the key ring, showing it on her outstretched arm and saying with excitement that it was a gift. The boy squinted almost imperceptibly as he looked at the bear on a string, which Shim Shui was dangling in front of his face. He immediately made fun of the gift, saying that she was behaving like a child. The girl, trying to prove that this was not the case, grabbed his jacket. He looked at the little teddy bear in his palm, hearing the girl's ultimatum, always carry it with you. Clutching it in his hand, the boy smiled broadly, saying that he would definitely wear it. Then Shui quickly ran off about her business, waving goodbye until tomorrow. He also raised his hand in a farewell gesture, but did not turn to the girl, just stood with his back to her. Minu looked at the teddy bear he was holding in his other hand. His face did not show the enthusiasm with which one usually accepts gifts from loved ones. He considered it a child's play. Now, sitting in the classroom, Shu stared at her boyfriend without blinking. She was trembling from what she had learned. She shook her head, trying to convince herself not to think too much about the fact that he hadn't worn the gift and about the text message that had asked her one question. Did she really think her boyfriend liked her? Angry, the girl began to write a reply, deciding to find out who was writing to her and whether this person thought it was funny. But she didn't even finish writing, having already received an answer. It surprised her, making her eyes glaze over. 
She sat and looked at the fact that the message was for something she hadn't even sent yet. Sui realized how strange it was. As soon as the class bell rang, she ran to the girl's bathroom, opening the door with a jerk. Jelly Pop immediately found himself in a trash bin that usually contained only papers from school notebooks and napkins. Shim Su tried to breathe steadily, not feeling very well and still thinking about that phone. Although she was hesitant, she still hoped that it would work and that she would never see that unfortunate push-button phone again. But something in the corridor caught her attention. She was surprised, staring at the end of the corridor. She saw her boyfriend and her sister elbowing him in the stomach. They both looked happy. Zhu raised her hand, waving and getting their attention, even though the call was not loud. They did not hear her, and the girl herself witnessed behavior that made her stop smiling. She saw Raim hugging the boy by the neck, and he gently holding her wrist, laughing at something with her. His touch on Raim's hand was very gentle and overly careful. That's definitely not how you touch a girlfriend. Sue looked down at Mina's other hand. She felt bad, but she had to see. He was now hugging you, Raim, with both arms, one around her waist. This is not the way you hug your beloved's friends or sisters. The girl looked at the scene for a few seconds, noticing everything she needed to. She even relaxed her hand, whose fingers immediately bent. Sue was dumbfounded. Her sister noticed her, looking almost guilty. It was only for a second, but it was enough to be able to understand. And then Raim smiled broadly, waving to her sister and greeting her. As she stood up straight and watched what was about to happen, Sue remembered the message she'd rather not remember. Do you really think your boyfriend likes you? Shim Sui sat at her desk in class, drawing in her notebook, wondering who the person who had sent her all those messages was. A stalker, a hacker, or perhaps a ghost? The girl was distracted along with everyone else, turning to the sound of the voice of someone reminding the teacher of the homework that he had not yet checked. As he held the pen over his upper lip, Go in Haek thought to himself that it was not for nothing that he had done that homework to avoid being tested. Sue kept her eyes on the boy, thinking that he was probably the one who knew her best and knew about the problems in her relationship with Minu, and that she liked him more than he liked her. Dropping the pen and catching it with one hand, Inhek looked back at Suye. A silent question could be read on his face. She recalled telling her friend that she didn't think he was suitable as a boyfriend, and my friend said that, in her opinion, Kang Min didn't really like her either. Once again, he failed to keep his promise, and Raim calmed her sister down by asking if she wanted to talk to him. Then Sue would cry out in hurt. She could see the boy's eyes still staring at her, almost unblinking. He was too attentive. The girl still looked at Inhek, thinking about who else would use Jelly Pop in the age of smartphones. She had only one candidate in mind. She heard a familiar melody while she was looking at the boy. The music started playing for the whole class. Looking at the lockers, Shim Suye couldn't believe it, because it couldn't be she had thrown her phone in the trash. One of her classmates went to the lockers, and the melody was still echoing through the classroom, helping her find the right personal locker. It was in her locker that the cursed pink phone was kept, which immediately stopped ringing when everyone saw where it was. As Suhi watched, she heard her classmates asking if it was in Hek's phone, but it was in Shim Suhi's locker. She felt very embarrassed by the whole thing. She heard the questions and whispers as she returned to her locker, where they had already taken the phone out and brought it to the teacher. He held a pink jelly pop in his hands and showed it to the class in Inhek, asking if it was his. The boy calmly took out his gadget, showing the teacher that he had his phone with him. The teacher scolded them for not handing in their phones and ordered them to hand them over immediately to be picked up after class. And while the girl was still thinking about the unfortunate phone, Go Inhek covered his eyes with his hand, tilting his head back and wailing that it was unfair. While one of his classmates was handing over the phones to the teacher, he spoke about the benefits of learning without distractions and considered the collection of phones to be fair. But Sue didn't listen because her mind was on something else. She had thrown away Jelly Pop without anyone seeing, but it came back and was in her locker again. After the lesson, she and Inhek stood in front of the teacher, listening to the teacher say that they had to hand in their phones and that what happened before class today would not happen again. The teacher had to ask the girl if she understood everything because she was staring at her phone. She held it in her hands and she held it much more carefully than before, as if it were alive and had fallen into the locker by itself. The two students left the classroom. Go and Heck was in the lead and Shim Suje followed slowly behind him, looking at his back and holding a phone. But the jelly pop dinged, 
alerting her to the message, and she immediately opened the cot to see what else the unknown person had sent. Shui looked at the message that Kung Min had sent, saying that he was going to the internet cafe today. She was surprised. A man's hand appeared next to the phone, covering part of the screen with thin fingers. It was Inhak who snatched his phone from the hands of a bewildered Suye, telling her that it was his jelly pop. Now she was surprised by this guy's behavior, not by her own message. Reading his text message, he held out an identical phone, not even looking at the girl because it was hers. She was a little confused, thanking the guy, but a notification came to her smartphone, distracting her from the awkward situation. Pulling her phone out of her pocket, Sue looked down at the screen seeing a message from Kang Min. She immediately frowned, lowering her head. The boy had lied to her about the tutor when he texted his friend that he was going to the cafe. Inhek had seen it. He could see that the girl was in a bad mood, mentally clearly comparing what Minu had written to him with what he had said to his girlfriend. Looking at Sue Hei, Go and Hek exhaled, asking her what she liked about him if she was dating him, referring to his best friend. The girl was upset and still looking down, thinking about her boyfriend, but hearing what his best friend had said. She looked up, looking directly into Inhak's eyes, questioningly. While the guy was looking at his phone, Sue wrote down why he was interested in this particular thing, but he asked again as if he hadn't heard anything. Still, she was persistent. Without taking her eyes off the interlocutor, she asked him why he was interested in what she liked about Mina. But Inhak was still on his phone, sending messages and simultaneously replying that he was not interested. He behaved incorrectly, showing that he was not in the mood for a conversation and was still typing a message, and replied that he had asked just for the sake of it. Sue looked at the guy, feeling lousy. He was trying to make her look like a nobody, and he was doing a pretty good job of it. Still looking at the girl, Inhek answered the phone, saying that he was on his way to meet the person who was waiting for him. The girl was looking at his back as he walked away, talking on the phone and leaving her in the middle of the corridor after finishing the conversation. But her jelly pop was making notification sounds, forcing her to focus on that instead of thinking about Go Inhek's behavior. She turned her gaze to the screen. Sue looked at the message from the unknown number, which could not be interpreted otherwise. She was being mocked. She saw another message explaining that the internet cafe was a girl. Shua looked up, angry at what she had received in the message from someone she didn't know. She and her sister were having lunch together, each choosing what they wanted to eat right then and there, and Shim Su Ai began to tell them that something strange had happened. Yu Raim looked at her sister with interest, asking her what exactly had happened, even stopping to chew her food in surprise. Sue ate rice in spite of her sister, and told her that someone had left a phone in her locker. Immediately, a pink push-button phone appeared on the table, so similar to a classmate's. Raim asked if it was Inhek's phone, because he was the only one in the school who had jelly pop while they sat across from each other eating. After chewing on it, Zhu replied that she had also thought of him at first, but that the thing did not belong to him. But biting into her spoon and thinking, she answered her sister's question by suggesting that Go Inhek should be the owner of the thing. She was suggesting this option, even though she had rejected it herself. Raim stared at her sister in confusion, pushing the phone over on the table. She had just said it wasn't his, and now she was saying it might be. Looking at her sister, Sue confidently replied that he was lying and was determined to catch him red-handed and prove that he was guilty. The next day, it was raining outside, washing away the physical education field. All the students gathered in the gym, but the teacher immediately announced that the rain was no excuse not to do physical education. The teacher turned to the student, who replied to his remark about withdrawing points by saying that he had not withdrawn points for the last time. Everyone started whispering that the student was in trouble. Shim Su He listened to what they were going to play today, standing alone and looking at the people who were about to be paired up. Looking at her classmates, she saw them start talking and discussing the game. She had so many options, but... However, she could not understand looking at her partner, why she had to be paired with him in this lesson. The girl felt a pang of suspicion because she had seen Inhek's face so often lately. The boy looked at her questioningly. He couldn't understand why she had come up and stood next to him, because they didn't seem to be friends. Inhek, after asking Shui if he had drawn the number 18, looked down in confusion and checked the number in his hand. He showed it to the girl, looking bored. Probably so, because he had already shown the number before to find his date for class. 
Now they stood there looking at each other, Sue a little puzzled, because the guy was asking if she was going to go all the way or if she had decided to think about herself. Shimsu looked down at him, feeling irritated. How dare he say anything at all, let alone say that she might drown herself. But Inhek, looking sideways at the girl, continued to give advice. He recommended going directly if you can't cheat. The girl squinted. It's unbelievable, he's acting like they're close friends. She felt uncomfortable with the fact that Go Inhek was her partner. There were many reasons for this, but the biggest one was his attitude towards her. She would have been better off with Kang Min, who was now standing with the girl, laughing and behaving in a way that he almost never did with Sue. She was sorry to see it all happen because her boyfriend was even on another team, let alone a couple with her. She thought that he was also sad to be paired with another girl, but what she saw was quite different. Minu was having fun with his classmate, not even looking at Sue. The girl was angry at what she saw, because it was not the behavior of a guy who was really interested in his girlfriend. But the next second, the ball came at her, and Sue had no choice but to grab hold of Inhek's shirt and hide behind it. She held on tightly without even realizing it, because all she was interested in was the ball that was about to hit her, and most likely in the face. And while Shim Suye was crouching behind the guy, he turned his head to her, put his hands in his pockets and said that he didn't think she would choose to hold on to him until the end. Looking back at the guy and crouching behind his back to avoid being hit again, she said that she had not expected this from herself. When the ball was thrown at them again, she pulled in Heck's jacket with all her strength, forcing him to retreat. The boy looked at Shu in embarrassment, fixing his hair and asking if she had decided to tear his uniform because she was pulling too hard. While the girl was blushing, the guy complained that the uniform probably looked too small on him, that she had decided to stretch it, and tried to take his jacket out of her hands. But she looked confused at the man who was shouting at the top of his lungs for her to die in the game of dodgeball, and telling her to throw the ball harder. She was staring dumbfounded at Kang Min, who was shouting at one of his teammates, pointing a finger at his girlfriend. She felt bad because Minu, who was supposed to be protecting her, was now advising her to aim for her leg to knock her out of the game. She sniffled, looking at the whole situation, as well as the fact that the girl with whom he was paired was holding onto his forearm, hugging him. They were whispering to each other about something, and she didn't let go of his hand as if she were his girlfriend. She was furious and angry watching it all. She was more annoyed by Minu's behavior and the fact that he didn't consider her a person close to him, and all he wanted was to win. Always. But Shimsu heard Go Inhek's voice and turned her gaze to him, distracted from the scene with Min Wu. He looked at her with his head turned and his back turned. He told her not to die in any case, to go on to the end because they could win. The girl looked at her partner in the game, not having anything to say for a good few seconds. He surprised her with what he said, but she still found the gift of speech, telling them both to concentrate. The ball was already coming at them. Kang Minu swung, putting a lot of force into the throw. Balls flew at Sue and Inhek from all sides, forcing them to crouch down to avoid being hit in the stomach and face. The boy was angry and shouted about the team that was supposed to kick the balls away from them, but there was no one around. At the same time, Minu was taking the ball away from one of his teammates, saying that he would finish them off himself. The guy swung, putting even more force into the blow and aiming straight for his own girlfriend, who was being protected by his best friend. Sue, feeling resentful of his behavior, turned her head to the side and covered herself with her hands to reduce the pain of the blow. But at the moment when she was already bracing herself, waiting for the shot and closing her eyes, someone's hand caught the ball and it never reached its target. Shim Su's head. Go Inhek stood with the ball in his hands, looking at his friend and asking him if he had thrown too hard. His friend had indeed gone over the line. The girl stood with her head down, tears in her eyes, feeling morally crushed. She was very upset that Minu was behaving like this. But the ball appeared in front of her, held by Inhek. He asked her if she wanted to take revenge for the hit. He was looking at her and saying that he would not take no for an answer. It was his way of showing her what happens when you fight back and don't let yourself be offended. Shim Sui did not give up. She put all her resentment and anger into the shot and threw the ball at the target with a good swing. The girl who was paired with Kang Min was holding her head where the ball had hit, screaming in pain. The two couples stood opposite each other and the room was silent. Everyone was wondering if it would end. 
Sue now felt guilty because her anger had momentarily clouded her judgment, and she had hurt another person. She was about to apologize when she was interrupted. Kang Min Wu was hovering over her, calling her and now asking her why she had to hit her so hard and what she was doing. However, Sue said that he was the one who started it, because he was the one who threw the ball very hard. The girl was shocked by what he said afterwards. Minu thought it was her making excuses and that she was really guilty. While the girl was rubbing her head because she was in pain, standing next to Kang Min, the guy made her apologize to his partner. She was sure that this was not the case and that she had not hit the girl in the face, but if it was necessary, she would apologize. Clenching her fists, Zhu thought that this was no reason to treat her like this, but she was going to apologize. She stood there, clenching her fists and watching Kang Min Wu touch her classmate's head, checking to see if she was okay. Sue was alone again, because he hadn't chosen her again. The girl kept thinking that she was his girlfriend, that it shouldn't be like that, standing next to Inhek and realizing that all her classmates were watching them. Behind their backs, the students began to whisper, interpreting it as a fight. A quiet discussion of what was happening began. Standing with her back to them and clenching her fists, Sue thought to herself that this was not a fight at all because it was only her who was beaten. She apologized softly, lowering her eyes and once again giving up herself for Mina. But what Inhek said made the girl's eyes pop out of her head. She turned to him and he looked at his friend and his partner and asked Zhu if she had killed the girl and why she was apologizing. The guy said it was just a game and anything could happen, rubbing the back of his head. By the same token, he should be apologizing all day long because he was hit hard with balls today. All the classmates were quiet again, watching the scene unfold. One said to apologize, another said not to. School drama with my own eyes. But then the girls began to discuss what they had won, because a punch to the face does not knock out a participant. This now occupied them more. Sue stood alone, abandoned by everyone again, because now she was standing behind the others, the last one. Inhek approached Kung Hana, which was the girl's name, asking if she was okay, but stating that she looked fine. She began to talk about how she was in pain. Minu, who had just come up, cared only about winning, saying that they could win, which attracted the attention of both friends. Shim Suye looked on, wondering why no one cared about her again, because her boyfriend should have asked her if she was okay, because she was the one who was hit with the ball. Then she left the room under the watchful eyes of her classmates, who were looking at her back. Her friends discussed that Kang Min Wu had really crossed the line by insulting his girlfriend in front of everyone and not even thinking about it. They felt sorry for her. They were discussing the fact that Shim Su even seemed to be crying, as one of her friends said, who was offended by the situation. The three of them felt sorry for the girl, who simply walked out of the room, still watching her walk away without haste. Guo Inhek also glanced at the figure who had already reached the door. He stood in the middle of the room looking at Shue. She quietly left the room, creaking the door to get away from the place as quickly as possible. On her way out the door, the girl wiped her face with her sleeve to wipe away the tears that kept rolling down. However, no one saw this because she was still standing with her back to everyone. Watching her, Inhek was even surprised. Was she really crying now? Zhu sat in the toilet, sniffling and wiping her face with her sleeve. She was very hurt, and all these images came to the surface at once, one by one, making her cry harder. Finally, deciding to clean up her act, she pulled out her phone, looking at the front camera, and was distracted by a text message she had just received. It was Kang Min Wu who asked the girl where she was. He just wrote without even calling. Sue decided that she would not respond. She deleted the message without even reading it. And then she turned her gaze to the window, laughing bitterly to herself. The situation was unpleasant and quite interesting. Shim Su Ye appeared in the classroom, opening the door and drawing Min's attention, who immediately turned around. She huffed and turned away defiantly and walked past the guy, not paying him any attention. Pushing her chair back and squeaking it on the floor, she saw what was standing on her desk. She glanced at the strawberry yogurt, which had always been a symbol of Kang Min and his care for her, even if it was so infrequent. Taking it in her hands, she read the note that was glued over the title. I'm sorry. She immediately turned back to look at her boyfriend, whom she had called an insulting word in the toilet not long ago, even though he hadn't heard it. Kang Min Wu sat there looking guilty, darting his eyes like a cartoon cat, begging her to forgive him. He looked at his girlfriend in embarrassment, scratching the back of his head and smiling. 
Holding the yogurt in her hands, Sue felt a surge of warmth towards the boy, melting at his apology. She smiled at the boy as she looked at him. It was a small victory for her, because she could see that he really felt guilty about the incident at the gym. She huffed and forced herself to control herself and turned away, even putting her hand to her face in thought. She was in the middle of a lesson that had just begun when her phone vibrated, forcing her to look down at her pocket. Without the teacher seeing her, she carefully took out her phone, looking at the messages under her desk. Minu sent a cute emoji apologizing, and before that he even suggested going to the cinema together. Sue was very happy because he had apologized, and her tactics of defending her boundaries had worked for once. She quickly hid her smartphone in a niche under the desk so that the teacher wouldn't notice she was distracted. She gestured to ask if they had agreed, because she had written to him to buy popcorn as well and waited for Min to respond. He smiled broadly, indicating that they had come to an agreement, but Inhak was sitting at the desk further away, distracted from his task and now looking at it all in surprise. Sue noticed this as well, now weakening the gesture she was making, because her attention was focused on the expression on her boyfriend's best friend's face. Go Inhak had an expression that showed his displeasure, he wondered if she was serious about forgiving Min so quickly. But Shue was only angry because she didn't understand why he was staring at her. She was distracted by the buzzing of Jelly Pop, which she immediately noticed, and after reading the text message, her eyes rounded with surprise. The unidentified man asked if she had forgiven her boyfriend for the strawberry milk carton. She immediately turned back with a sharp movement, looking again at Inhek, thinking that it was he who had sent it because he was the only one who had noticed it. But he paid no more attention to the girl, going about his task. She sat up straight, staring at the desk and quietly saying that he was crazy, because there was another text message that said she was a saint of simplicity. But the question from the teacher standing over her startled Shue, who immediately looked up at the teacher. He had already folded his arms across his chest and was looking at her questioningly. He kept asking who was crazy, and the girl tried to lie that it was about the novel and the main character, who, in her opinion, was insane. The teacher suddenly hit her on the head with a rolled-up piece of paper on the head, urging her to concentrate and not to do various unnecessary things. Rubbing her head, she sat there guiltily, listening to the teacher's lamentations about the exams coming up. But she couldn't put the message out of her mind. She kept glancing in Inhek's direction. Turning a half-turn and looking at him, she was sure that it was definitely him and no one else, while the boy was calmly writing in his notebook. The last bell for the day rang, signaling that classes were over. Shimsu looked at her boyfriend in confusion, asking if he really meant to invite Raim to the cinema with them. He looked up from his phone, looked at the girl, and asked her with a smile what was wrong. She said, hunched over, that it was okay, even though she thought it was just the two of them. She didn't say anything about it. Sue pouted, but asked him to wait until she had cleaned up, as she still had schoolwork to do. Waving to the girl with her legs up on the table, Minu told her to hurry up, because he could have left everything and gone himself without waiting for her. Everyone was doing their own thing, cleaning and sorting garbage into different bins in a separate small room. Having done her work quickly, Zhu ran away even faster, saying goodbye to her classmates who hadn't finished their part of the cleaning yet. Go Inhek stopped putting the bags on the floor and sticking his hand to his side, because it was supposed to help him with the other buckets he was now staring at alone. The guy exhaled loudly, closing his eyes and thinking about something else. He needed some time to calm down and get back to work. Shim Su Ai was cleaning herself up in the girl's bathroom, touching up her lip gloss and thinking about how long it had been since she and Min Wu had met. When she came out of the toilet, she saw Go Inhek, who was looking at something in the classroom in surprise, as he could see everything that was happening through the large windows. As she got closer, she wondered what it was that surprised the boy so much. She turned to the window to see everything for herself, but Inhak turned his head to her, looking at her with some pity, which Suhia, of course, could not notice because she was looking straight into the classroom. Her eyes grew bigger and bigger as she watched what was happening. She thought that the boy should have done something differently if he was going to cover for his friend. She saw Mina kissing her half-sister Raim, and she returned his kiss without pushing him away, even though he was her sister's boyfriend. They were both so gentle with each other, taking their time with the kiss, enjoying every second of it until it was over. 
Goin Heck put his hand over the girl's eyes to prevent her from seeing what she didn't need to see. He was worried that he hadn't made it in time. It was written all over his face. The girl was still looking, not even blinking, but now at the hand that was blocking her view. Hu Raim started to turn, noticing a movement in the window. Zhu grabbed the boy's hand to take it away from her face because she wanted to see. She was completely calm, to her own surprise. The two of them ran to another classroom, which was open. Sue pulled the boy along without saying a word. Yu Raim looked towards the windows of the classroom where Inhe and her sister had been standing in the corridor, but saw no one there. She told Min that she had heard something in the corridor, looking at him and distracted by what he said she had heard. Go and Heck leaned back against the wall, closing his eyes and letting the girl hold him on his jacket while she did what she saw fit. He opened his eyes and looked directly at her, asking what she was doing because he did not fully understand what was happening. But his eyes widened in surprise when Shue, without saying a word, covered his mouth with her palm facing him. With tears in her eyes, she put her finger to her lips, showing him to be quiet and not let them be detected. But the boy took the girl by the wrist of the hand that was near his mouth. He didn't like it. At the same time, the bell rang, signaling the end of the class. They both turned at the sound of Kong Min's voice, looking for the girl and asking if she had finished her cleaning. In Hak quickly turned them both so that they were not visible from the corridor as he passed the classroom. They both listened to what Raim and Minu were talking about. She asked him if he really wanted her sister to come, and he said that it would be better if she didn't come at all. Tears welled up in the girl's eyes again. She couldn't believe she was hearing all this, but she continued to listen, not believing her own ears. Inhek put his hands on her shoulders, listening along with her as she told him that his friend would be better off watching the film with Raim alone. He looked at the girl who was shorter than him, feeling guilty and embarrassed. This was how he found out about the betrayal. Shimsu bowed her head and cried, her tears falling to the floor, and she didn't even try to stop them. She was in too much pain. The guy almost rolled his eyes and exhaled, because the whole situation was both funny and not so funny especially since he probably didn't like tears very much and certainly didn't want to witness this girl's hysteria. While she was crying, covering her face with her hand and resting her elbow on his elbow, he exhaled once more, throwing his head back and banging the back of his head against the wall. The bell rang in the classroom. Her phone, which was in her pocket, was now ringing. Looking at the girl, Inhek was calm, asking her how long she would continue to cry, perhaps until dawn. Pulling out her phone, she still sniffled and looked at the message she had received, and then she turned and left, answering a question from a guy who was going to see a film. Sue heard the boy ask if she was normal, because she was acting as if nothing had changed for her after what she had seen, and would she really go to see a film? She turned to Inhek again and he put his hands in his pockets, staring back. She asked if she could pretend she hadn't seen anything or something. He was stunned by their response and asked them again what she meant. Shim Su came closer looking him in the eye and telling him to say it to her face if he had anything to say, because she had seen his pitying looks at her and the text messages he sent to that jelly pop. But he looked at her and told her to open her eyes if she didn't want to hear anything like that about herself. She just walked away, bumping her shoulder into the guy's forearm and showing everyone with her appearance that she did not like this conversation. As Shim Sujay walked down the stairs, she was still crying and thinking about Inhek. What right did he have to look at her with such pity? When she left the school and stopped in her tracks, she wiped away the tears falling on the tiles, thinking that she did not have the strength to pretend that everything was fine and that she had not seen their betrayal. She recalled how Minu's face would light up with joy and happiness when he passed her in the corridor and told her to watch the film with Raim. Looking at them now, as they stood outside the school, she realized that he had never smiled so openly when talking to her. Zhu put the phone to her ear, calling her sister, who immediately picked up, Standing behind the column so that she could not be seen, she lied that she had a lot of extra classes and that it was better for them to go without her to watch the film. The push-button phone in her backpack buzzed, alerting her to an incoming message that claimed she was indeed crazy and out of her mind and stupid to boot. Go Inhek appeared next to her and left the school after her, and the girl calmed down a bit, although her eyes still tingled with tears. She was looking at a message in Jelly Bean when a guy walked by without even paying attention to her. The girl could only stare back at him, torn from the messages that he had apparently written. It was long after dark, and the streetlights were on, illuminating the playground, where sobbing and coughing could be heard. 
Curled up on one of the children's rides, Sue cried, her face buried in her hands folded in her lap. She wondered why her sister was kissing her boyfriend, and if it was the first time. She was crying and wondering what her sister was really thinking when she told her about kissing Minu. Then they sat on the bed, hugging pillows and talking about how Sue was going to kiss Kang Min. She was determined, but the guy kept joking and didn't take it seriously. This is what she told her sister. She was as red as a tomato when she told me that she had grabbed the guy by the face and took the initiative and kissed him. Raim then looked at her blushing sister, saying that she was a real girl, since she decided not to wait for the boy's initiative. But she still thought about the fact that Kang Min Wu hadn't grown up inside, even though he looked like an adult on the outside, and blamed it on the fact that he was born in December. Raim exclaimed that her sister, who had said it as if to show her how to kiss, had kissed in an adult way before and had not told her how to kiss her sister. Sue took hold of his face, completely losing control and overreacting because she wasn't talking about an adult kiss, but a simple peck. Her sister giggled at her, saying that Sue herself had already grown up because she had already kissed. As she leaned into her pillow, she said that since Kang Min was not yet mature enough to kiss, she would have to wait for someone so advanced. Now, as she sat on the playground crying, she thought that he had grown up, and that he was kissing Raim. Shim Suhi entered the house, creaking the door. She tried not to make too much noise because it was after eleven. As she passed the table in the kitchen, she noticed the food covered with plastic wrap to keep it from drying out, with a note attached. She read that it was written by her sister, who had left her a snack after a hard day's work at the course. She signed it so sweetly, saying she loved her sister. Sue clenched the note in her fist, feeling the lie reeking from every word she wrote and from Raim's concern. With a loud knock, she opened the door to her sister's bedroom, determined to find out what was going on and how she dared to do this. She threw a crumpled note at Yu Raim, hitting him directly in the face. The girl put a lot of hatred and anger into this throw, even though he would not have done anything to her sister. She spoke loudly, waking her sister and telling her to get up. Raim sat on the bed, rubbing her eyes irritably from sleep and asking what had happened. Standing in front of her sister's bed, she asked if she was not ashamed to play with other people's feelings. The sister looked down, telling Sui to speak more clearly because she didn't understand. Gritting her teeth and feeling betrayed, she nevertheless said that she had seen him and Kang Min kissing. But Raim started laughing, sitting on the bed and looking into her sister's eyes. Sue was shocked by this behavior, not understanding what was happening and why her sister was behaving this way. But Raim only laughed at what her sister said, asking if she had really seen it, although it was more like a question that did not require an answer. In front of her sister, who was dumbfounded, Raim behaved very smugly, asking when exactly, yesterday at school or in the yard in front of the house, or maybe in Sui's room. Looking at her sister, she was shocked and could not say a word. It was all too much. The girl stood in the kitchen, looking down at her hand and thinking that this is exactly how it would happen. She held the note in her fist and then unclenched it, looking at the piece of paper, which she appeared to still be holding in her hand. Zhui stood alone in the middle of the dining room, looking at the note in her hand and thinking about how to tell her sister and whether she would really react. She opened her eyes with great difficulty, hearing her name spoken by her sister's voice, not understanding what was happening. Yu Raim was surprised that her sister's eyes were so puffy, but she told her to get up and wash her face as soon as possible, because they would soon be late for school. As I was leaving the room, Raim advised me to wash my face with cold water to help the swelling go down, smiling her best smile. Lying on the bed, unable to get up, Sue thought about her dream, which felt all too real. Looking at herself in the bathroom mirror as she brushed her teeth, Shim Su thought that this was not a dream, even though she wished it were. As she put on her school uniform, she thought she should go out and talk to her sister, tell her that she had seen her and Minu, and ask why she had kissed him. Now looking at herself in the wardrobe mirror, she was preparing to talk and vent her anger in order to get answers. And now, standing in the middle of the apartment, Sue couldn't bring herself to speak, even though she could see her sister in front of her. Raim was looking for something in the fridge, ignoring Sue's appearance. She was wondering what she should do and how to behave. The first course of action was to slap the guy as Sue thought, and then immediately offer to break up and end the relationship. The second option was to slap the friend who betrayed her and stop communicating with her. Sue thought that she should leave Mina, but Raim, 
She was her sister, and what if they quarreled? My parents will definitely ask me what happened between them, because before that they were so friendly, like blood sisters. She imagined Raim packing his things because Sue would tell her parents about her betrayal, and they would not be able to forgive her. She also recalled how they used to talk while lying on the bed, both making cucumber masks. Then her sister shared her life story and how her father had abandoned them when her mother became pregnant. Closing her eyes, Shim Suye thought that she couldn't just tell her sister because it would put her in danger, and she had suffered a lot in her short life. She opened her eyes in fright when she felt something touch her face. It was a spoon that Raim had put on her face. The girl was frightened, jumping back a step and screaming, which amused her sister. Raim stood there, smiling and explaining that it was just a spoon and that she needed to apply it to help the swelling go away. She said that Kang Min would be surprised to see her like this. The three of them walked to school, but only Minu and Raim spoke to each other and only to each other. Sue walked along sullenly, not calling out to them or disturbing them. And while she was feeling betrayed, her boyfriend was talking to her sister, asking her for the answer to the English test he remembered she was taking today. When she stopped, she thought that the whole situation was illogical, and that something out of the ordinary had happened in her quiet life, and she didn't like it. Looking down, Shim Sue saw the lace on her sneakers untied, which could have caused her to fall. She sat down to tie it and continued to think about her own thoughts, looking away from her sister and the boy, who continued to walk. Tying her shoe and looking at their backs, she now understood what everyone else saw, but what she did not see and did not want to understand. The way Kang Minu looked at Raim, the way they both looked in each other's company. All of this was clear now. When she stopped, Yuraim turned around because she hadn't noticed her sister was there. She asked why her sister wasn't going to school, looking worried, while Minu turned his head boredly with his hands in his pockets. Sue stumbled, trying to think of a lie that would work to avoid going with them, and finally came up with one. She had forgotten something at home. Turning around, the girl ran in the other direction, not responding to her sister's calls and Minu's telling her to leave her alone and go to school, not really expecting her to return. Now Shimsu was peeking out from behind a column in front of the school, watching the head teacher chase away those who were late or out of uniform. Today he was surprisingly angry, as if someone had bitten him. Zhu answered the phone, still watching the school's punishment for tardiness. Her friend asked her why she hadn't come yet. The head teacher decided that it was time to take everyone for a few laps around the stadium, as this would definitely strengthen the student's desire not to be late for school. After hanging up the phone, she was still thinking about which option to choose because she could go goose chasing with the head teacher, go to mom's touch, or leave school altogether. Sue exhaled, thinking about her options. She turned her head to the side, watching the other students. They helped each other climb the high school fence so that the head teacher wouldn't catch them being late and then they all ran away from the fence so as not to be seen, and not to be caught up in their plan. Shimsu herself was already looking at the high fence, holding the straps of her briefcase. She gathered her thoughts and jumped up, trying to reach the iron fence to grab hold. But she still grabbed the top of the brick part of the fence, trying to hold on and pull herself up to climb over. The girl did not succeed. She flew down because she had neither help nor sufficient physical fitness to climb over. Still feeling the pain of the fall and with tears in her eyes, she turned at the sound of footsteps. Someone was passing by. She assessed the person walking, pantaloons instead of normal shoes, a pulled-up hood, and no uniform or tie. Looking at the guy's back, Sue thought that he would definitely not get away with just running or walking on eggshells. She put out her hand to stop the guy because they could help each other, and she definitely needed help. The girl grabbed the sleeve of her hoodie squeezing it and pulling it towards her to attract attention. The guy turned around, showing his face. It was Go Inhack in person. The girl remembered their last conversation, when she asked if she could play dumb and act as if nothing had happened and she hadn't seen the betrayal. And then he replied that she needed to finally come to her senses and start noticing what others had known for a long time. Turning around, the guy pulled the earpiece out of his ear, looking at the person who dared to stop him, twisting the headphones in his hands, he asked if it was a habit of Sue's to unceremoniously grab others by the sleeves. And then he recalled that yesterday, she had also unceremoniously dragged him into her office, pinned him to the wall, and... He didn't finish because, embarrassed and furious at the same time, he was interrupted by Sue. He asked her why she had stopped him by pulling his sleeve. 
He really wondered what she was up to and what she wanted from him. She didn't know why, but she almost immediately came up with an idea. Leaning over and thinking how impudent he was, she asked him to help her climb over the fence. She began to explain that she was trying her best, but she was not succeeding, and she still needed help. Inhak exhaled noisily, looking away and showing with his whole body that he cared little about this conversation. She waited for his answer. The silent pause dragged on, so she asked him again if he would help. But Inhak just turned around and walked away, putting his hands in his pockets and not even trying to answer her. She said that the head teacher was there and that he would not be able to enter the school dressed like that even after the first lesson started, because he was standing at the entrance like a Cerberus. And while she was looking at his back expectantly, the guy stopped, closed his eyes, and exhaled loudly. Damn, it was a stupid day. And yet he agreed. Inhek began to explain what to do by putting his foot near the fence and bending it. First, step on his foot, and then pull himself up. The girl was very focused, lifting her foot on the boy's leg while he looked at her anxiously, telling her to be careful and not to rush. And while Sue was trying to climb up on his leg, Inhek turned to the side, saying that if this option didn't work, he would put his back to her. The boy leaned on the fence to avoid falling when the girl balanced on his bent leg. Meanwhile, she pushed off to give herself a boost to get up. She was very pleased that she had succeeded, holding onto the iron top of the fence, but immediately looked over at the guy who had caught her eye. He was apologizing. Without looking at her because he was ashamed of what he had done yesterday, he said that he did not think the girl was stupid. He just knew that she was clueless. Shim Su Ai was dumbfounded that he had apologized so suddenly, and at such a moment when she was hanging from the school fence, a memory flashed through her mind, how yesterday they were standing in that classroom and she asked him if she could play the role of a fool and pretend she hadn't seen anything. And although in her head she told him to take care of his eyes, because she could gouge them out hanging from the fence now, out loud Sue stumbled and said that it was okay. She also apologized as she waved over the fence, saying that she had said a lot of things yesterday. Of course, it was only about 3% true, but she was trying to be nice. When she stepped on the ground, she said, and it was 100% true, that the text messages he sent her were making her a little angry. But Go Inhek was puzzled. He hadn't sent any text messages. So he looked up to the fence where the girl on the other side was standing and looked at her questioningly, saying that he hadn't done it. And while she was looking at him, he kept talking, saying that he had no idea what she was talking about, because he didn't even have her number. They kept looking at each other each standing in their own place, and Sue wondered if he would continue to lie to her even now. Lowering his head and not looking at the girl anymore, the guy scratched the back of his head, saying awkwardly that it didn't matter because they had broken up and Kang Min was not a very nice person. Sue looked at the boy with resentment, wondering if he really thought the end of her and Minu's relationship was predictable. But there was no point in explaining that they hadn't broken up yet, because it was going to happen soon. Instead of responding to his words, the girl stretched her hand across the hedge, telling him to grab it and she would help him climb. Inhek looked at her as if he had never seen her before. She really reached out to him and wanted to help. She was very nice. In his imagination, he saw them holding hands. How she, so sweet, was becoming even sweeter as she waited for him. And then there was another picture of the two of them falling from that fence to the side of the street because it would not be able to hold his weight while he was climbing up there. Embarrassed, he wondered aloud how she would lift him, because he knew perfectly well that they were in different weight categories. Sue looked at the boy questioningly, because they had already decided that they would help each other, and she asked him about it, looking down at him. He thought for a few more seconds and then took off his school bag over his head. The next moment, she flew over the fence, and Inhek told the girl to put his bag in his usual place in the classroom. Clutching his bag in her arms, Sue looked at the guy, not understanding what he was going to do. She called out to him to at least explain. But he had already turned around and was walking down the sidewalk towards the school entrance, hands in his pockets. The girl remembered his words about how she and Minu had broken up. And then, one by one, images from the recent past began to flood her memory. She remembered the photo of the teddy bear she had given Kang Min, the same keychain that had disappeared from his backpack. The look of Inhek, who was unhappy that she had forgiven her boyfriend for a carton of strawberry milk. 
And then his conversation on the phone when she read about the internet cafe and the way he looked at her, who was there. And when she was standing at the exit of the school, she received an offensive text message, and Inhak was just leaving the school. That was yesterday, when they found out about Min's betrayal. Sui thought that only he could have known exactly what was going on, because he was in the know and was Min's friend. The girl was so busy with her thoughts that she didn't notice the barrier that marked the beginning of the parking space and was already flying face down, clutching the guy's bag in her hands. Although she managed to land on her feet and not fall, something fell out of Inhek's bag, and the girl started looking for what it could be. A pink push-button phone was lying at a fairly distant distance, the same jelly pop that Go Inhek had always used. She was shocked and afraid. Had she really broken his phone? How could he have flown out of there? Zhu picked up the phone, running over to him and checking to see if he was okay, looking at every corner to make sure. She breathed out a sigh of relief when she saw that everything was in order and the phone was intact. Shim Sujay walked down the corridors of the school, clutching in Hak's bag in front of her. She peered into classrooms through the windows, walking slowly because she was already late. She turned her head towards the open classroom, constantly thinking about what had happened yesterday. She really didn't want to go there, see Mina, and pretend that everything was fine. She looked into the empty classroom where she had caught her sister with a boyfriend yesterday. The image of their kiss stood before her eyes. And while Sue was too busy thinking, Kang Minu appeared next to her, leaning over and scaring her with a simple boo. The girl jumped in surprise, dropping in Hex's bag, which she had been clutching so tightly. She had fallen to the floor when she was frightened, and now she was sitting there watching Minu laugh at her and pointing. Minu was crying with laughter, saying that she was very funny and that she was pretending to be weak. Shim Suya looked at her boyfriend, not understanding what was happening and why he was behaving like this, and he smiled as he continued. He said that, unfortunately, he was the only one who could see this shameful reaction to a simple joke. The girl, shaken, slowly got to her feet, picking up Inhek's bag, which had been lying on the floor next to her. Tamin noticed that it was Go Inhek's bag, so he grabbed the girl's wrist as she held the bag. The guy immediately stopped laughing, looking serious, and asking why she had another guy's thing. Sue looked at him, smiling slightly. Was he jealous of her friend, seeing her with the bag? His tone might have said yes, but... She remembered that kiss in the classroom, how desirable he had kissed her sister. The girl turned her head, asking in a rather sharp tone what he cared about. He insisted that he cared because he was her boyfriend. If it's anyone's business, it's definitely his. Someone's hand fell on Ming's shoulder, slapping him on the shoulder quite loudly. He turned around with a sharp movement, throwing his arm forward to instinctively defend himself if necessary. It was Go in Huck who asked what they were both doing here during class, but thought to himself what the hell this idiot, Minu, that is, was talking about. The guys looked at each other, and Kang Min Wu asked what his friend was talking about, what kind of breakup he was talking about, while Sue frantically thought about what to do. Clutching Inhek's bag in her hands, she knew that things were very bad because she and Minu hadn't broken up yet. Looking at his friend, Minu asked him what made him talk nonsense, but he thought to himself that the atmosphere between them was tense and could not understand why. Shimsu turned around, looking at what was happening behind her in surprise. This was the last thing she needed. The students gathered in the corridor, looking with interest at the scene that was unfolding. Some of them were even whispering, but so loudly that one could make out questions about the upcoming fight. But there was no stopping Go Inhek. He told his friend everything, calling him a bastard, and even spoke out loud about kissing Raim and how he still dared to talk to Sue afterwards. Everyone around him heard everything the boy said. They had also heard that Zhu had seen him kiss her yesterday, and now they were spreading the word and starting to discuss it in detail. She stood there awkwardly, listening to herself say how pathetic she was, that they were telling each other what Inhek had said, because the crowd was growing and everyone was curious. The girl stood there unable to move for a few seconds, but thought that this was not the right place for such talk and that now everyone knew everything. She took a few steps, quickly finding herself next to the boys, and shouted, attracting their attention and standing between them. Zhu held out both hands, keeping the two boys at a distance so that they would not continue to fight. They were surprised by what Zhu was doing now. She looked at Inhek, who did not understand her behavior, and whispered that they might not have broken up. To say he was surprised would be an understatement. 
he looked at the girl with wide eyes, not understanding what was happening. Guiding Kang Min into the classroom and putting his hands on his back, looking at In Heck and saying that he has no idea why he thought they broke up. It took him a few seconds to understand the situation and what the girl had said. As soon as it fully sank in, he changed his gaze to one of open contempt. Shim Su Ye sat gloomily in her seat in the classroom, bowing her head and thinking about everything that had happened in the corridor. She thought about why it had happened in the first place, and that she should have just left Nina, and that was that. Did she remember In Heck saying all those things to his friend because he thought they had broken up? Was that why he had decided not to keep quiet any longer? There were tears in her eyes, and she decided that she would deal with In Heck later, as she couldn't put everything on a sick head. And then she heard her friends. They looked at her, sitting at the desks in front of her, asking if she and Minu had had a fight, because Sue didn't look well. One of her friends said that something untoward had been going on between them for several days, attracting the other's attention and leaving Shim Su alone for a few seconds. She dropped her head into her hands, leaning against the desk. She didn't have the energy to answer why she hadn't changed her shoes for school and comment on the fact that her brain had shut down because of today. She thought that if it had been a simple quarrel, it would have been easier. And then there was Min Wu's jealousy when he saw In Heck's bag in her hands. Lifting her head and turning it towards the door, she looked at Mina, admitting to herself that her heart sank for a moment. As Minu played with the ball, telling them to pass it to him, she thought about how, despite what had happened yesterday, she still found him attractive. But then she turned away, clutching her head, ashamed of herself, because she was so undividedly in love that her love was enough for two. Another friend of hers appeared next to her, smiling sweetly, asking her how she was feeling and if she wanted her friend to lift her spirits. Without even looking at the girl, Sue told her to try it because she was in no particular mood. Kang Ah Jin handed her something, asking if Shue would take it again, and her eyes lit up with surprise and anticipation. The friend was holding the manhwa that Sue loved so much. The book had many imitations and it was almost impossible to find it. It had been published since 1979 and was a super hit about true love. Due to the author's death, the manhwa could not be completed and its publication was discontinued because she was unable to finish her work. It was a work of literary art about a girl who was in love and was on her way to be with her lover, and the action took place in Versailles, Paris. Sue recalled seeing this manhwa on a shelf at her aunt's house and it immediately caught her eye. While her mother and aunt were talking, she was reading the manhwa, turning the pages quickly, because it was incredibly interesting and impossible to put down. Then, reading this visual novel, Sue realized that it had become her favorite. After that, she read it many times, but she still didn't get bored with it. She grabbed the book, looking at it with loving eyes and not believing her own eyes that she had the manhwa in her hands again. Kang Ah Jin was not happy, it seems, that she had given it to me to read, but Sue didn't see it. She was too deep in her monologue that the manhwa was impossible to get, giving out too many facts about the circulation and publication. She went to her locker at the back of the classroom, carefully placing the manuscript she planned to take home after school and read. She paused for a second and looked through her belongings in her locker, thinking that no one was to blame for the situation in her life. But she turned to the side in fright when she heard a loud bang from a nearby locker. It was Go In Heck who sat down to get his things from his locker. He didn't pay any attention to her. Looking at the boy, she remembered his look of disdain and thought how awkward and uncomfortable the situation was. Something hit her leg, forcing her to turn to the other side to look and find the football the boys and Mina had been playing with. It was now at her feet. The girl raised her head, looking at those who had thrown the ball. Three of her classmates, including Kang Min Woo, called her, asking her to throw the ball back to them. Kang Min Woo looked gloomy as he looked at the girl and said nothing. He just waited for the ball and kept his eyes on her. This made her angry because she knew that look. He thought she would turn away, feeling embarrassed. But this time, Sui thought he was wrong. She ignored the boys and their request, turning in the other direction and addressing Go In Heck, who was still fiddling with his locker. He pointed at himself in surprise, wondering if she really meant him and was addressing him. The girl was a little embarrassed because everyone was looking at them, but she asked the guy if his phone was okay because she had recently dropped it. The guy turned his gaze to those standing behind Shim Su, seeing her boyfriend among them, who was also looking at the scene. He said that he would forgive her for dropping his phone if she bought him something to eat in the canteen. 
And then, making her look at him, Inhek put his hands in his pockets and walked past her to the exit of the classroom. He made the boys angry by kicking the ball away from the board, asking what it was. And then he turned his head to the side to look at the girl and asked if she was going to the dining room with him. Sue followed Inhek, passing Mina and ignoring him completely. He only gave her a glance when she was close to him. Honestly, he couldn't believe what he was seeing. So he opened his mouth in surprise, unable to say anything to his girlfriend or stop her. Kang Min Woo felt many emotions as he stared into the wake of his friend and his girlfriend, but the biggest one seemed to be that he was simply ignored and abandoned. After some tea, Go In Hak came out of the dining room holding his food. At the same time, Shim So He looked at the two ice creams on the stick in her hands, as if she were seeing them for the first time, because both halves were equal. Her shoe came untied as she was leaving the dining room, again. She noticed this when she broke away from contemplating the identical ice creams on sticks she had been admiring before. Lifting her foot, Sue was angry because her laces were untied again. She was still holding the ice cream, wondering what to do. She clicked her tongue in displeasure and looked after the boy, deciding that she should buy the same shoes, but without laces. The girl ran up to Inhek, who was enjoying his soft drink in a soft pack, and hadn't paid any attention to her yet. A second later, he was looking at the ice cream in front of him, looking down and wondering. When he turned his head to Zhue, he heard her question. She was asking if he would eat one half of the ice cream and smiling. He was surprised to see her because he hadn't expected anything like this. Sue laughed softly, because she did not understand such an inexplicable reaction to a simple ice cream. He remained serious and didn't even try to smile when he said he didn't eat ice cream on a stick, because he hated it when it dripped. And then he walked on, savoring his mochas, while Sue stood there confused by his answer and thinking he was a rude man. He was clearly surprised, turning his head to the girl, who apologized to him out loud, calmly walking a step away. Embarrassed, Sue looked at Inhak and handed him the ice cream, apologized again, and asked him to take it as an apology. Lowering her head and blushing with shame, she said she was sorry for putting him in an awkward position because she should have told him at the fence that she and Minu had not broken up. But he simply turned his head in the other direction, saying only, ah, which puzzled Sui. Was that all he could say to her in apology? They walked for a few seconds in awkward silence, and then she asked if that was all. He replied with a question of his own, wasn't it? Shui now asked if he wanted to ask why she didn't leave Kang Min after she found out, but he again asked the counter question of whether he should be interested at all. At first, she looked down saying no, but, but then she wrote down something else, whether she was really weird for not breaking up with a guy who was kissing another woman. And he looked at Sue, saying nothing yet and immersing himself in one of his memories, how he stood in the darkness of the room, looking bitterly at the scene unfolding before him. The girl sat alone, leaning her head on her hand. She was upset because it was her birthday and she had a candlelit cake and wine, but she was crying. Looking away, because he could neither look at the girl nor directly, he muttered that she was strange. Shim Su Ai looked at the boy, her eyes bugging out and not knowing what to say, as he replied that there was a reason for not acting like everyone else, because you don't really need a reason to act like everyone else. She couldn't believe what he had just said, wondering if it was really Go In Heck. While the girl was looking after the boy, one of the students ran past, hurrying about his business. When he caught up with the girl, he stepped on her shoe, and she was just about to take another step. As a result, she was flying down with two ice creams in her hands. The boy picked her up, now holding her by the forearm and looking her straight in the eye. After a second, when she could speak again, Sue immediately thanked him. She turned back to the man who was running past, angry that he didn't even apologize to her and just kept running. Sue stuck her hands out in the ice cream, asking me to hold them while she tied her shoelaces. He shook his head, pointing to the ice cream and saying that it was already draining and melting. But while the girl turned the ice cream over and was angry that it was already melting, Inhek began to lean in front of her. Sitting down, he placed his drink beside his foot on the pavement, not worrying about germs or the packaging getting covered in dust. And then he began to tie Sue's shoes, looking only at what he was doing and not looking up at her, even though she couldn't look away. She loudly wrote down what he was doing, because this gesture was far from friendly and made her uncomfortable. But he just continued to do his thing, calmly explaining that he didn't like sticky hands and it was disgusting, so he had to wait a little longer, because he was almost done.
turning her head to the side and blushing. Sue was thinking about how embarrassed she was that the boy was tying her shoes. But then she heard voices that made her listen. It was Yu Raim and his girlfriend, who were walking to discuss something before they saw those standing close to them. A guy who was calmly tying shoelaces felt a girl's grip on his shoulder. She dragged him with all her strength into the bushes, without asking or saying anything, just to hide from her sister. They were both sitting behind the bushes, and the girl was looking out cautiously. Inhek couldn't help but wonder what it was, so he asked. Sui didn't hear the question because she was too busy looking at her sister and wondering where they could have gone at that time. And while she was paying no attention to anything around her, the guy glanced at her hand. It really caught his attention. The ice cream left in a warm hand, even though it was on a stick and in the warm sun, melted very quickly. He quickly took the two ice creams from her hand, as there were already a few chocolate drops. While Inhak was disgustedly holding the ice cream by the sticks and letting it drip onto the pavement, Suhi turned to him, attracted by his gesture. He looked at the girl, asking with a puzzled expression why she was looking at him the way she was. She was surprised but replied that he didn't like his hands to be smeared with something sticky. Deciding to change the subject, the guy smiled, turning his head to the side and exhaling. He wondered if she had a hobby of hiding. She said it wasn't a hobby looking at it, but she didn't want to see her sister and pretend everything was fine. It was only then that she noticed the ice cream was melting. Zhu quickly took both of them from his hands, saying that he had soiled his hands. Go in Hack was sitting across the room, laughing at the fact that the girl had eaten one of the ice creams in one gulp. Picking up what she was going to buy from the shelf, Raim looked out the window in disbelief. Right in front of her was Go in Hack with her sister, smiling at her so sweetly, saying something about trying again and she said that her mouth was frozen. Raim stood by that window looking at his smile and laugh, which were so sweet and sincere. Her friends looked at Shim Su with suspicion. They asked her if she really didn't want to go out to eat with them. She was trying to get them out of there as quickly as possible to do what she wanted, because she had deliberately arranged everything so that she and Minu would be alone. Behind her back, to prevent her friends from asking other questions, she held a sandwich she had made herself. She thought about the fact that she had been up most of the night trying to find the right words, and replaying in her mind everything that could have happened during the conversation. Now Kang Minu was playing football with the other boys on the playground, unaware of what his girlfriend had decided. Standing in the middle of the corridor at school, looking out onto the street where they were playing football, she wondered why she was hesitating to do this. The girl thought that there was a castle inside her that had been building since they started dating. It was built piece by piece from happy shared memories. The more memories I had, the bigger this castle became. At first it was small, then even bigger and then bigger until it reached a huge scale. On the walls of this castle, Xue saw photos of them together. Here they are posing, showing a heart together. And in another one, they are taking a selfie, where she is making a face and Minu is smiling sweetly. Or the happy photo of them, when he was riding her on his back and she was laughing out loud. Or the time Minu laid out a heart and a path of candles when he gave her flowers. She realized that the more memories she had, the higher the wall became, and Sui herself was getting further and further away from other people. Even her friends stood in front of the high wall, wondering if they could enter and contemplating the wall that surrounded the castle of Shue. However, they decided not to knock because she would not hear. Wandering around her inner castle, she got lost in it, because it was so easy to get lost among the many memories and doors, losing herself. She entered the room with Kang Min's name written on the door, noticing the backstage area in the candlelight. Shim Su Hee, holding the black curtains with light behind them, opened them, looking up. There was her sister, Yu Raim, or rather a portrait of her that captured her beauty and the sweet smile with which she looked at Sue in great detail. Standing in front of the image of her sister, she realized one thing. Even if the reason for ending a long-term relationship is obvious, it does not make the process any less difficult. Sitting on the bench, Sue called out to Mina. He came over, scratching his head and asking why she had called him, because he wanted to play football. The guy sat down next to her while she was saying that she had to talk, so she called him over. He had already started to open the sandwich that was lying next to him. She turned her head sharply to him, interrupting herself mid-sentence, even though she had started to speak. He asked Minu what exactly we meant, because that was all she could say, looking at the girl but the sandpiper had lettuce sticking out of his mouth. 
Sue looked at him and thought that he had not only ruined her first love, but also ruined her first breakup. What a bastard. At Kingman's questioning gaze and mouthful, she stood up from her seat, asking him rather rudely how he could eat at such a time. She clenched her fists in anger. The guy's mouth dropped open when he heard what Zhu said. She wasn't asking. She was saying that they should split up, and that's what she was suggesting. Walking away from him and not responding to his call, she thought that there was no point in asking why he had kissed Raim. She did not want to hear another lie. She recalled the three of them sitting in class, her and her sister talking, laughing, while Minu rested his head on his hand and looked at her. He openly stared, then said that he was disgusted to look at her because she had mucus in the corner of her eye. Sue then covered herself with her hand, blushing with shame because he had noticed and was uncomfortable. And while she was cleaning her eyes, she heard Raim reprimanding the boy, but she didn't care. Now she turned to look at him, and in the same rude tone as before, told him to wipe his mouth when he ate, because it was disgusting to look at. Although she was flushed at this behavior, as she walked away from Min, Sui thought that it was nice and relieving to respond to rudeness with rudeness. Inside herself, the girl watched as a huge hole gaped in the wall of her castle, with light coming through. This was her way out into the world, to her friends. She was sitting in a cafe with Kang Ah Jin, only she was eating tokpok while Shim Su Ye was running around her plate, eating almost nothing. Her friend stopped eating, stopping her fork with a piece by her mouth and opening it in surprise when she heard that Su had broken up with Kang Min. But while her friend was processing the information in her head, the girl was looking at the phone in front of her. Yu Ra Im had written that she had plans with friends and did not answer the questions that Sue had asked him. Exhaling loudly, Xu looked out the window, saying that he was really annoying her a little bit and finally they broke up. Her friend was of the same opinion. Suddenly my sister flashed through the window of the cafe, smiling as she talked on the phone and went about her business. Shim Su Ai stood up from the table with a sudden movement, startling her friend, who asked where she was going, as they had been having lunch together and she had hardly eaten anything. Kang Ajin was still asking if she had fallen ill so suddenly, because Su Ye had lied about feeling unwell, but she couldn't hear her anymore, as she left the cafe to follow her sister. Entering the place where Raim had disappeared, she spied, moving so that her sister would not notice her presence, as she wondered if she was with Minu. Peeking around the corner, Su watched where Raim was going so that she could see who else was there. As she sat there on the floor, she thought about what she was doing here. This was too much. This was Raim's private life, and Sue needed to leave as soon as possible. She started to get up from the floor when the door next to her opened. Zhu pretended to fall down as she listened to the girls who came out of the room, gossiping about someone being in a very close relationship. For some reason, Sue wanted to listen. When the girls didn't suspect her of eavesdropping, she exhaled, blushing a little. She looked in surprise at the strangers who had already passed her and continued to talk, gossiping about the close relationship between Yu Raim and Baek Dong Hua. They kept moving away, arguing about whether they were a good couple, and one girl even said that Baek Dong Hua was flirting with her. Shim Su Ye, getting up from the floor, immediately looked through the window of the room where her sister had just entered, trying to see something. Among those dancing to the songs of one of the boys, a sister sat a little further away in the company of a boy sitting quite close. He bent down to the girl, whispering something in her ear, and Raim closed her eyes, listening to him with a subtle smile. It really was Bak Dong Hua, the star of the school adored by the girls and bathed in adoration and love. The teacher asked why there were so few people present, looking around the classroom. He decided to take a roll call to check who was missing class, opening the logbook with names and photos, and immediately asking if he had stolen Bak Dong Hua's photo from the logbook again. He asked me not to do that. Those girls said that Baek Dong Hua and Yu Raim had become very close very quickly, and now they looked like this, whispering about something, ignoring their friends around them and the noise of the company. Shim Su Ye looked out the window, her hands on both sides of her face to see better and to see things. She thought about the free relationship, as her sister spent time with one man and kissed another. She didn't notice anything around her when a familiar voice asked her what she was doing, leaning down next to her and looking out the window with her. The girl turned her head to the side in surprise and a little bewilderment, looking at the person who had interrupted her surveillance. It was Go Inhek who looked at her with a calm expression, asking if she was watching. 
They stared at each other for a few seconds without saying anything. It was obvious that Sue was blushing because she had been caught spying, but she wasn't going to give up easily. Standing in the middle of the corridor, the girl pretended it was all a lie, asking if she could come to rest. But the guy just looked at the empty corridor, asking if she was alone. With her arms folded across her chest, Shim Su Jae lied to the last. She said she was definitely not alone. In Hack, with his hands in his pockets, looked at her, asking if her friend was a guy. She was annoyed that she couldn't get rid of him, so she said it didn't matter who she was here with and that he would be better off going out and having fun without worrying about her. Turning around, the girl walked down the corridor to one of the rooms to show that she was not really alone and that Inhek had imagined everything. Looking through the open door with a crack, she watched what the boy would do and when he would leave, because she did not want to admit that she had been spying on her sister. Turning and telling herself under her breath that she was at a loss for words from the surreal situation, Sui suddenly noticed something as she turned to face the room. There were other girls there, singing and enjoying each other's company. They all paid attention to her, even stopping to sing karaoke. The strangers looked at her with a question in their eyes, which then turned into a verbal one. Who the hell was she? She could see their uniforms. They were girls from Tapin, a school of slackers known for their lack of breaks in their actions. She started to apologize, turning to the door again and lying that she had just got the room wrong. Shu tried to get out of there as quickly as possible. But one of the girls was already standing next to her, preventing her from opening the door, hovering over her in a threatening manner and asking her again who she was to barge into the room with the others like that. Sue began to make excuses. The girl recalled how one of her school friends was talking about her introduction to the Tapan school when she was unceremoniously called by one of the girls. As soon as her friend saw her uniform, she immediately slapped her. Then they mentioned Sun Jung Hua, an eighth grader who had his money taken from him for a bet by the same students from Taepyeong, and then used it to buy cigarettes. Now, standing in that room, Zhu closed her eyes, thinking that she was now caught up in the same story. Suddenly, the door creaked open, signaling that someone else had also entered. The girl who had been keeping Shu from leaving immediately looked up, questioningly at the new person who had disturbed them. It was Go In Hak who glanced over at Sue who was already looking back at him. The girls who had stayed on the sofas started talking because they recognized the boy. Now they were talking about how handsome he was. Without reacting to all this, he took the girl by the hand, apologizing to those who occupied the room as he went. As he led Sue out and put his arms around her shoulders, he said that his friend had simply mixed up the rooms and that they were very sorry for disturbing the girls. After leading the girl out, Inhek looked into the room once more, smiling sweetly and wishing her a pleasant stay before closing the door behind him. The girls from Taipin stared open-mouthed behind the closed door, asking each other if it was really Inhek's friend and agreeing that they should have taken her phone number. The guy was leading the girl to the exit, pushing her in the back with his palm and stopped at the top of the stairs to the second floor. Sue turned to face him, standing at a half turn, while Inhek said that she had better learn to lie or not lie at all because she was not good at it. Looking at the girl, he waited for an answer to his question about Raim, because Sue did not want to see her, but followed her, and he wondered why. Shim Su was furious because it turned out that he had not followed Raim as she had thought, but had come at her invitation. Saying that he would not explain anything else, Go Inhek turned away and went to the room where his friends had been, who had invited him to rest. She was even more irritated because the guy was not a man of his word and was rude. Standing on the threshold, Sue looked up to assess the extent of the rain. It was clearly not going to end soon, unfortunately. She sat down on the steps leading to the second floor and put her head in her hands and thought about her sister. So she and Baek Donghua were in an open relationship, but why was she kissing Kung Min? With tears in her eyes, she held her head, thinking that it would soon explode from the number of thoughts going through it. You could go crazy while figuring out a relationship, she thought, and muttered under her breath that she didn't even have anyone to talk to about it. A notification came to her phone, pulling her out of her thoughts and forcing her to look. An update to her favorite game had finally been released. She wrote a short post on social media to remind people to take an umbrella because she was caught in the rain, putting her phone in her skirt pocket. But her attention was drawn to the sound of jelly pop ringing in her backpack, which was standing against the wall on the same step as she was sitting on. 
Sue glared at her backpack. She had a bad feeling about this whole thing. She opened the push button phone and there was an incoming call from an unknown number. She decided to answer and put her hand with the phone to her ear when a guy with an umbrella entered the room. The girl was splattered with water, starting to grimace and unclenching her hand with the phone because she had forgotten about it. The next moment, the pink jelly pop was already falling down between the steps. At least the guy apologized, quickly passing by Sue, who was sitting on the step in her wet clothes. The girl looked at the phone, which kept ringing as she lay in the basement of the locked room. She saw Uraim on her way out. She was alone, stopping only at the doorstep, because it had started to rain and she was probably wondering if she should go. But the very next moment, my sister ran out into the rain because she was in a hurry and clearly did not want to wait. Go in hack holding an umbrella was coming down quickly from the top floor. Seeing him jump out into the rain without hesitation to shield Uraim from it with an umbrella, Sue thought that everyone really liked her sister. She kept her eyes on Vin Raim and quietly told herself that everyone loved her. Bayek Donghua, Go In Hak, and even Kang Min Wu, and she didn't notice that someone was standing next to her. But as soon as she felt someone's presence, she immediately turned her head to the side to see who was standing next to her. Looking down at her was none other than Bak Dong Hua. Shim Sui was sweating, because she realized that the guy who seemed to be standing next to her the whole time could hear everything she was muttering under her breath. The guy looked at her without saying a word but did not look away. Sue was already dripping with sweat, coming up with many excuses for why she had said what she had, because she thought she had said something wrong. But Bak Dong Hua simply raised his hand to meet Shim Su Jae's questioning gaze and began to move it in front of her face, gesturing for her to simply move out of his way. And then he walked around her without saying another word, except for the move away he had rewarded the girl with before. Turning to follow him, Sue was angry. He had brushed the man aside as if he were just an annoying fly. Donghua raised his head, assessing the rain situation, just as Su Hye had done recently. He knew that the rain was not going to stop soon, and he wondered why it had to come down like this right now. Smiling, Sue was wondering why everyone had become so tactless lately, but she heard Donghua address her as friend and turned to face her. Looking at him questioningly, the girl folded her arms across her chest, furrowing her brows. What had he just called her? She couldn't believe it. Friend! Instantly changing his face and becoming the embodiment of kindness and grace, the guy asked if she had an umbrella. He smiled, covering his eyes and showing the sweetest of faces. Sue thought that a second ago he had brushed her aside, and now he was asking for an umbrella and with such an innocent look. She replied that she didn't have one, thinking to herself that she wouldn't have given it to him even if she did. His emotions immediately vanished from his face, as if they had never happened, and he looked at her like that again, as if she were just a mere insect in front of him. And then he turned around and, without saying anything else, was going to go out into the rain, although he was clearly not happy about it. Shim Suhia looked at Dungwa's back and couldn't help but get angry. He was so insufferable and bitchy. Remembering him standing with his back to her at school, she wondered who he really was. He always attracted attention even when he wasn't doing anything special, like when he was just walking by in Chupa 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 and made everyone around him whisper to themselves. One day at school, the boys were loudly telling each other something, and the girls asked the most talkative and loudest to shut up and be quiet. Bek Dong Hua was sleeping, but woke up to a loud discussion, attracting attention. Everyone turned to his voice when the guy said that they gave him a headache, and all the discussions fell silent. Holding his temple, he said that Min Siok was too noisy and that he was not allowed to sleep properly during the break. The girls were blown away by his rudeness, mistaking it for straightforwardness because he didn't care what anyone thought of him. There was also an incident at the stadium when everyone was running around to warm up, and the teacher noticed Dong Hua in the stands, who decided to show up only for the fourth lesson. In fact, the teacher asked him about this, wanting to know where he had been until the fourth lesson, but the boy just nodded, greeting the teacher. And then he just put his hands in his pockets and walked on, as if he wasn't the one who was being addressed and didn't have to run with everyone. When discussing Dong Hua, one of the boys said that he was very calm, and that it was probably because he came from a wealthy family. He didn't try hard in class if he attended it at all. He was more interested in the dubious company that gathered across the street from the school gate and caught the eyes of the students. 
Shimsu's friends said that although they were hooligans, they were attractive. This surprised her. Shaking her head, she thought that bullies are bullies and that doesn't change a pretty face and appearance. He was known for hanging out with bad guys and having really good looks that even caught her eye. He wore branded items along with his school uniform, being able to buy anything he wanted. Gucci sneakers or a Balenciaga t-shirt. They said that he even moved from his parents' house, which was far away from the school, to a place closer to it because he loved to sleep. He chose an apartment in a new building. Dong Hua had a lot of money because his parents were too busy to spend time with him, so they paid him off in this way. Standing next to him now, Shim Suya looked at the boy carefully, thinking of only one thing. Was he really telling the truth and flirting with Raim? Baek Dong Hua turned to the girl, feeling her gaze on him and now looking back. He, to her great surprise, only clicked his tongue at her and turned straight again, looking at the rain pouring down outside. He said that she would soon see a hole in him with such success. And then he quickly took an envelope from the mailbox that had previously belonged to someone else and walked outside with confident steps. She watched the guy walk away, thinking that he had just picked up someone's mail and walked with it, covering his head from the rain as if it would help a lot. Putting her hand out into the rain, Sue realized that it would not end soon, so she ran in the rain to get home as quickly as possible. As she ran past a snack machine on the corner, she heard a familiar tune, the same one that Jellybean had set up. The girl stopped, her eyes bulging in surprise and not believing what was happening. When she took the phone out of the machine, which she had dropped in the basement, she saw a small mouse sitting next to it. The mouse looked at her with its muzzle slightly outstretched, and Sui looked back at her. She didn't react for a few seconds in shock. Then she squealed because it was a mouse. The phone, meanwhile, flew away in the rain. As she was falling, losing her coordination from fear, someone caught her, holding her tightly and not letting her escape. It was Go Inhek, holding a bright yellow umbrella over her, holding her tightly in his other hand and looking her straight in the eye. She couldn't believe what she was seeing. A phone that was lying on the road and was open was filming the two of them, calculating Shimsu's percentage of love. However, unfortunately, when the information was uploaded, it was zero out of zero. She had no love and should not have had any in her entire life. My friends called from a noisy karaoke club, plugging their free ear to hear something. They asked where Inhek was and when he would be back. When he replied that he was not far away and would be there soon, he saw a message from Raim that made him feel disrespected. While the salesperson was checking out the goods Inhek had taken, he turned his head to the side and something outside the window caught his attention. He saw Shim Su running in the rain, covering herself with only her palms folded over her head, as if that could help her. The boy put another umbrella in front of the seller, asking him to count it as well. The moment was spoiled by a man riding a moped, signaling them to move away. The girl, noticing that they were going to get drenched, turned so that the boy was in front of her and she could cover him with herself to prevent him from getting soaked to the skin. But when she turned to him, she saw him sitting in a puddle on the sidewalk, his umbrella lying next to him, looking at her, unable to look away. They stared at each other for a few seconds without saying anything. She was standing, soaked to the skin, because she had her back to him, and he was sitting on the sidewalk, soaking wet despite her best efforts. Sui invited him home, she pointed to her apartment, which was not far away, and said that she would give the boy a change of clothes so that he could change. And while Inhek was walking in the direction indicated, the girl saw her jelly pop lying on the road. She stopped and wondered if she should pick it up, and if she even needed it, because it was only trouble. At home, the first thing she did was hand him a towel to wipe his face, hair and hands with so that he wouldn't be sweating so much. While he was drying off, Suhi was rummaging through her dresser, trying to find a hoodie to give to Inhak to change into. She finally found what she was looking for and handed him the sweatshirt. The girl quickly led Inhak to her room, shoving him in the back and telling him to change and come out as soon as possible. When she left the room and the boy closed the door behind her, Sui thought that she should put her things away more neatly so that she could find what she needed much faster. When he started to take off his top right next to the door, Go Inhak didn't even notice that something was hanging on it. He hit one of the photos, which fell to the floor. Sue looked at the Polaroid of herself and Kang Min. He was showing his heart with her, and she was kissing him on the cheek. And then she remembered that there were a lot of photos of her and Minu. A whole board! And also the exact letter or clipping from a love story pinned next to it. 
and the teddy bear on the bed. The girl burst into the room, telling him not to change yet, because she needed to come in. A second later, she was looking into the eyes of Inhek, who had half taken off his top. Zhu began to quickly clean up, but stopped and turned to face him when he asked what she was doing. She began to explain that she had just broken up with Kang Min today, so she had to get rid of everything they had in common as soon as possible, so that it wouldn't remind her of the relationship. And then she left, telling him to get dressed and leave as soon as possible. As she packed up her things, Zhu turned to the sound of the door opening and immediately noticed a tall guy coming out of her room. He stood there in his black hoodie, adjusting it, but it was still a little too small for him. He blushed, asking if he was okay in it. But instead of answering, Shim Su Jae leaned back on her arm as she sat on the floor and began to laugh out loud and sincerely at In Hek's words, that he would rather put on his own clothes. Shim Su stopped him and had already gone to her parents' room, turning to him at their door and saying that she would give him some of her father's clothes. The boy turned his head, looking at the happy family photos on the walls. There was a lot of stuff. Photos of just the parents from the wedding, a photo with Sue, but without Raim, and a photo of the two of them together where the white-haired girl felt lonely. She sat with her arms around her knees and looked sadly at the camera, because she didn't feel like she belonged in the midst of all this fun. And there was a photo of the girl next to a beautiful white-haired woman just like her, hugging her. It was her late mother, and Raim was smiling. The boy remembered himself as a young boy. He was looking at some crumpled papers, which, among other things, contained a photograph of the same girl as the one on the walls of this apartment. He heard his father talking on the phone, talking about an interview, some responsibility, and talking very loudly. Meanwhile, Shim Su Ye came out of her parents' room holding her father's shirt and thinking that his clothes looked like he had escaped from the circus. They looked at each other in silence, only the crickets were missing. In heck at the girl and the shirt in her hands, and she at him holding the shirt in her hand. The girl held it up to the boy with a guilty look, apologizing with a sweet expression on her face, because it was strange, but it was the best her father had ever had. After a while, when his clothes had dried a little, the guy in the fancy shirt slung his bag over his shoulder, saying that he would return the clothes on Monday. He was about to leave. But the father entered the apartment with bags of food, greeting his daughter. They both stood there bewildered and embarrassed by the situation. Inhek and Dad both looked at Shim Jai, and she was at a loss for words. The girl quickly began to make excuses to her father, as he asked who was at home, starting to mumble and stutter. But while Sue was trying to find the right words, the boy, who had been standing a little further away, blocked almost the entirety of the girl's figure, appearing in front of her father's eyes. He calmly said that he was her classmate, while Shim Su Ye was recovering from her shock and looking at him, completely confused. But her father was looking at his own shirt, which he had only just noticed on the boy. His surprise was plainly written on his face. Straightening his shirt, In Heck apologized, saying that he didn't have any suitable clothes and that he would wash it and return it on Monday. After bowing to her father, the boy turned to Sue, saying that he was leaving and bidding her farewell. When Inhak caught up with his father, he turned his head to him, asking if he wanted to stay for dinner if he hadn't eaten yet, calling him friend Sue. Now they were both looking at each other. Feeling rather embarrassed, the boy looked at the girl's father, finally saying his name. Now, sitting at the table, he thought about what was happening. He was at Shim Sue's house, wearing her father's shirt, waiting for him to prepare dinner. The girl put her cup on the table noisily, attracting attention with this gesture. Inhek turned, looking at her and asking with a single glance what it all meant. With narrowed eyes, Sue tried to convey her question whether he was really going to have dinner here because he had been invited. And if she spoke with her eyes, he spoke with his eyebrows. They went up and he seemed to be answering. Should he have refused the older man? She got up from the table because her dad called her to try what he was cooking, and she still furrowed her brow, looking after the boy. The food was delicious. He asked her if it was enough to seduce her mother, but she said it was probably not enough, and they both laughed, because the man immediately realized that his wife had asked him to say that. While they were chatting so warmly, Inhek looked at this atmosphere and was at a loss for words, just marveling at how good and sweet everything was between her and her father. Shim Suai took out a bottle of wine from the bag next to the table and asked her father what the occasion was if he had also bought a cake which was now standing away. 
She opened the letter that her father had written to her mother, reading, To my eternal love, he in. And while her father was putting dinner on the table, saying that everything was ready, Shim Su was almost crying from the sweet letter that her father had written to her mother. The table was piled high with delicacies prepared by Shim Su's father, and they smelled delicious. The girl was eating a delicious dinner, thinking about her own thoughts when her phone buzzed in her pocket, alerting her to a message. When she pulled out her phone, she saw that it was a notification from her blog, where she was writing a fan sequel to the story she loved so much, The Dark Rose of Versailles. All the people were writing comments about the suspension, discussing this very thing. She decided that to avoid hate mail because of the suspension of her fanfic, she needed to make her blog private, and so she clicked on this option in the settings. She put the phone down on the table with the screen facing down, returning to dinner. But then his father complimented Inhek, saying that he was handsome. The boy was embarrassed and even choked on his food, just like Suhi herself, who had stopped eating. But her dad continued, joking that all the boys at her school were handsome because both Inhek and Manu were handsome. And then she did spit out the soup when she heard her dad ask if Min would be jealous when she found out that Inhe was at their house. The father was smiling looking at his daughter and asking if he had said something wrong, because the atmosphere at the table had changed dramatically. Sue was going to walk in Heck to the bus stop because his father couldn't take him because he had to pick up his wife. So they both came out of the apartment to let the girl show them the bus stop. Standing in the lift as they rode up to the first floor, she thought about how embarrassed she was and wondered if in Heck felt the same way. Turning her head, she saw an incredibly handsome guy Wondering if this shirt was really that good up until that moment, she covered the guy's face with her hands in front of her eyes, looking only at the shirt, which definitely wasn't as attractive now. Now that she realized the shirt was really not that good, she knew one thing. Go in heck was a really nice guy. He said that her parents' relationship is very warm, smiling as Zhui shared a phrase from her father who said that he would seduce his wife for the rest of his life. But now he was looking at Sue with a frown, because she had said that she had thought all her life that this was the way things were supposed to be, that this was the way a girl and a boy were supposed to be. With her head bowed, she said that when she met Kang Min, she realized that this was not the case, and that not all boys are like her father. Saying that she was disappointed in everything, she also shared that she thought she would be like her father in her relationship with Minu, and he would be like her mother. Silence reigned in the lift, and the pause was quite awkward for both of them. No one broke the silence because they had nothing to say. She laughed, asking if he really thought she was pathetic because that was what she could see in his eyes at school from time to time. But he said that he did not, and that he understood her now. This was very surprising to the girl, who now looked at the guy in a completely different way. They looked into each other's eyes, never looking away and never speaking again. It was a sweet moment between them that neither interrupted for long enough. Looking at the boy, Sue wondered if the lift had always been such a quiet place. On Monday, Sue was standing on the street with her friends, talking and smiling. She thought it all started on that day. Turning her head towards the sound of Go in Hake's voice, she watched him smile and wave his hand in greeting. He looked cute holding the ball and waving at her. He started pretending they were close that day. They came to the bus stop and when the bus was on the horizon, the guy said he had forgotten something. He held the phone in front of Shim Su's face, asking her to give him her phone number. The girl was embarrassed, asking if he really didn't have her phone number. And in Heck just looked at her with a question in his eyes, asking her in return how he would have got it if she had never given it to him. She still thought that it was him who was sending her those messages on Jelly Pop, but she picked up her phone and wrote down her number, handing it back a few seconds later. He picked up his phone and boarded the bus, which was at the bus stop waiting for passengers. He sat down in an empty seat, which was just opposite where Sue was standing. And while he sat there looking straight ahead, Zua was thinking about why the bus wasn't moving and how embarrassing this situation was, with her hands in the pockets of her hoodie. She took out her smartphone, which started ringing, and saw a call on the screen. On the bus, Inhek smiled at her slightly, showing that it was from the caller. He asked her to save his number. And all she could do was look at the trail of the bus the boy was riding in and have no idea what was going on. At school, the girls gossiped about Moran and the idols who would be performing in the group. There were a lot of rumors about the new faces of Moran, and they talked about them. 
One of the girls pointed at a photo of one of the idols, saying that Beck Donghua looked very much like Mint, the same guy from Moran. They were talking about Beck Donghua becoming a trainee and thinking that they should ask him for an autograph now, so that it wouldn't be too late. Sui was listening in. As she walked away from the gossiping girls, she thought that sleeping in class and playing hooky was not evidence of his involvement in Moran, but rather a common occurrence for Beck Donghua. But there was a major gossip that spread through the school, causing everyone to whisper amongst themselves, discussing all the details. The main character in those gossips was Shim Suje, because everyone whispered that it was she who had dumped Kang Min. She and her friends walked slowly to school, talking about how they were having chachang pab and strawberry milk for lunch. Everyone was in a great mood. At lunch, the whole school was gossiping that Goen Haek and Kang Min Woo had fallen out, and that the former had become close to Shim Su Jae. Everyone thought they were having an affair, telling each other about it at lunch. Looking at Minu scratching his ear at the table, one could immediately understand why the girl couldn't stand it, because his character, in addition to his behavior, was bad. Everyone turned around when she entered the dining room to look at her and gossip about what was special about her, that she was now with Inhek. Everyone was looking at her, distracted from their lunch and looking her up and down to share new gossip. Sue pretended not to notice this, although it was a rather uncomfortable environment for her. She kept sitting at her desk, thinking to herself that she could hear everything, her beautiful legs, her slightly thin frame, and her sweetness. Kang Ajin joked with her, teasing her that she was a celebrity at school today, laughing quietly at this. The girl squinted as she heard the man next to her referring to her as the main character of gossip and a hot girl. She told him not to mock her, blushing, but then she saw that there was a strawberry milk carton in front of her. Next to her sat Go Inhayek, who smiled as he looked at her and told her that she liked strawberry milk. She stared at him, her mouth open in surprise. Kang Ajin asked very loudly, attracting the attention of everyone in the dining room, what was going on with their inhack, causing a surge of embarrassment for both the boy and Sujai. Immediately, the dining room was buzzing with activity as each student discussed the fact that the boy had brought her strawberry milk and that they seemed to be really together. He looked at her and Kang Min, sitting almost opposite her and not looking away. This was unusual because he usually didn't pay attention to her. At another table, Yu Ra'im was also sitting, looking at her sister, but with a kind of longing in her eyes, not understanding what was happening. Shim Sue wondered what was on her ex's and her sister's minds, not following the conversation at their table. Inhek noticed this and looked at her and followed her eyes. He then turned to Suhye, asking her if she would go to the cinema with him tonight. She snapped out of her thoughts, looking up and turning to the boy. She thought she had misunderstood, so she asked him again what he had asked. He looked at her calmly, propping his head up with his hand and repeated the offer to watch a film together. By doing so, he added more fuel to the gossip fire. The whole school was discussing what they had seen as they put down their lunches and waited to see what would happen next. No one took their eyes off Sue and Inhek. Smiling very sweetly and innocently, she asked, and he realized that if he asked such a question, they would be misunderstood. The two looked only at each other, while Shu asked if the boy meant to study together. The girl looked at him with that look of hers, telling him to be reasonable in this situation and not to heat things up even more. At the same time, Kang Min Wu loudly threw a spoon onto his iron tray, attracting the attention of everyone around him. All the students turned to him, staring at the couple. Silence fell in the dining room. In Hei and Su turned to him. The girl was surprised while the boy looked bored because he knew what his former friend was doing. Minu stood up from the table, loudly pushing his chair back and walked out, not turning around even when his friends called him. The girl was shocked by this behavior, because it was ugly, and in general, he didn't care about everything that was happening now. Looking at all this, and at Mina, who was defiantly leaving the dining room, she felt her self-control almost destroyed. After the bell rang from class, Inhek saw a note on his desk that hadn't been there just a few seconds earlier. When he turned it around, he read that he was supposed to meet someone on the fourth floor, but he knew it was Shim Shue. When we met, she first of all asked if it was necessary to ask about the film in front of everyone, smiling her sweet smile. Inhek, as always, was calm and did not understand what was wrong, so he asked, looking at the girl, why not? 
Snorting, she folded her arms across her chest and asked the same question sarcastically, starting to talk about how there had been too much gossip about them lately. But she stopped in mid-sentence, wondering if he really didn't know what they were talking about at school, and if he did, would it look like she was the only one who cared if he did? But the guy calmly said that he would ask her something similar when they were alone, which broke Sue out of her thoughts. Looking around, he checked to make sure no one was there, and then smiled and asked the same thing, if they would watch the film together. Looking at the boy, she recalled that she had looked up every time before to see him, but now she saw him differently. Everything was different. But before she could think about what was in her head, Inhei jokingly said that she had forbidden him to say that, so he rephrased it, asking if they would work out together. She asked him if he was mocking her, because she remembered saying the same thing to him in the dining room, so that they would finally get off their backs and find a new object of gossip. The guy snorted, then immediately started laughing at his own joke. Pulling out her phone, Shim Su Ai looked at the time, noticing that it was already 6.10 p.m., and they had agreed to meet at the cinema at 6.30 p.m. She was passing a guy who was on the phone, making an appointment with someone when he elbowed her in the face. They were both looking at the sewer grate where his phone had fallen on impact. The stranger began to shout that she was blind and that she could not see where she was going. She mumbled an apology, but he only shouted harder, asking what to do and what she had said. She started to apologize louder, but the boy said she had to give him her phone. Shimsuya even asked again, thinking she had misheard him. He held out his hand, saying that he was talking and needed to finish the conversation, so she had to give him her phone number. This bastard looked very scary. The girl was thinking about what to do, because she knew that this jerk was going to run away with her phone. But the decision came quickly. She remembered the jelly pop in her pocket, which she carried with her. So she gave it to her boyfriend to call. He held a push-button phone in his hands, joking about whether she really used one and whether she was old. With a tight smile, Sue thought that she wouldn't have picked up such an old phone if she were in his shoes, and then she heard the ringtone. She immediately snatched the phone out of the guy's hand, saying she had to take a call. And while he was clenching his hands into fists, saying that she had completely lost her mind, Zhue did not listen, answering the call and listening. This began to attract the attention of others, and they turned their heads towards them. The girl whispered in the boy's ear to make him appreciate the situation, because she was funny and brave. Baek Donghua looked up from his phone and looked bored at what the girl next to him was talking about. Shim Su was too busy with the call, as the caller hung up without saying anything to her while the stranger was yelling at her to hand over the phone. All of his friends were staring at Kang Yang, because he had stuck his face in the mud with that girl and failed to intimidate her. They all laughed at him. Furious that his authority was being damaged, he began to humiliate the girl, pointing his finger at her forehead and telling her that she was a nobody and that his call was important. But someone called out to him, and the sneaker flew off after the call to draw attention to him. It flew straight into the boy's face, hitting him quite hard. Kang Young screamed in surprise, forgetting about Shue. Wearing only a pair of sneakers and white socks, Yu Raim walked through the dust, telling him to leave her sister alone. Raim read the messages she exchanged with her sister, realizing that she was ignoring her because she had not replied to a message she had sent not long ago. When she woke up in the morning, she was still yawning when she left her room and saw that Shim Su was already fully packed and leaving the apartment. Looking at the clock on the decorative mantelpiece, Raim saw that it was only half past seven, so she asked why her sister was leaving, but she didn't even answer, simply closing the door behind her. Then she looked into the room and saw that the girl was already in bed and seemed to be sleeping. It was while Raim was looking through the messages that she heard a noise around her that caught her attention. She saw her sister and was ready to call her, but she stumbled because she saw her sister quarreling with that guy. The girl gracefully approached her sister and Kong Yong wearing the same sneaker, telling him to stop bullying her sister. Holding his nose, he made excuses to the girl, even though he had asked her if she had thrown the sneaker because he was hurt. Then he looked over at Sue, smiling guiltily, because she hadn't told him that Raim was her sister. Standing there, Shim Sui couldn't believe that it would all be resolved so easily, because he had been screaming just a short time ago, but now he had calmed down and backed off. He asked Raim how she had become more beautiful since their last meeting, and she just waved him off, telling him to go away. The girl thought she was ready to shoot all the arrows at her sister, 
because she had seen the kiss with her own eyes, but she easily crossed the line that Sue had drawn for their relationship. It was quiet in her desert of anger, only the remnants of the walls that Shim Su had built in preparation for the invasion of her sister or ex-boyfriend. She considered it the last act of leniency. That is why she did not shoot an arrow at Raim, because she had betrayed their friendship and sisterly relationship. But suddenly, someone appeared on the horizon who did not look like her sister, so big and scary. Raising her head, Shim Shu stared at the monster, salivating. But then Raim appeared, steering her huge sneaker, crossing the line that Sui had drawn for herself in her communication. She stood against the monster in one sneaker in the sandy desert, but she defended her sister. Zhu looked at the shadow that appeared on the horizon, slowly turning in her direction. It was the chaos, anger, pain of betrayal, and inferiority complex that now appeared to be Shim Su's companions. Raim looked at her sister and waved her hand in front of her eyes, asking if the jerk had hit her on the head. Slapping her sister's hand, Zhu said she had things to do and had to go, not even answering her sister's question about her own health. As she walked in the crowd with her hands in her pockets, she thought that she was not in the mood to watch a film right now. But she thought they had an agreement with Go In Heck, so she had to go. And looking at the time, she began to speed up to make it to the appointed time. And then she saw a message from the guy who apologized to her, calling her sister Raim. She thought that her sister would be a person if she had a father and mother, recalling how Raim was bullied in the yard, mocked for being an orphan. How my sister cried while sitting on a children's slide with her head on her knees to close herself off from the world around her. Then Shim Su came to her rescue, telling her not to hurt her little sister and doing so with an extremely serious expression on her face. Hugging her sister, Su joked that Raim was shorter so she would be the younger sister of the two. At 18.10, Go In Heck looked at the clock on his phone, seeing that he still had 20 minutes to go and therefore time to go to an internet cafe. He immediately said that he had plans and little time, so he asked one of his friends to say what he wanted to say so as not to take up time. But he suddenly saw Kang Min sitting at the last computer in the row, now looking at him as confused as In Heck was looking at him. The guy turned to leave because he didn't want to see his former friend, but Minu shouted to get his attention. He said that he was the only one who had the right to be angry, because the gossip about In Heck and Su was already everywhere. When he approached, the guy said that he was not angry with his friend, but asked him if he was just disgusted with him. But Kang Min Wu didn't react to this. He just asked what was going on with him and Shim Su Jai, saying that he had been misunderstood. However, In Heck was determined and said that he didn't care what his former friend thought of him. But they were both distracted from their quarrel because a new message arrived on the computer, the sound of which made them both turn to the monitor. They saw Kang Young Wu pointing his finger at Shim Su Jai's forehead, and someone else wrote that there might be a fight and asked Min if she was his girlfriend. Both were terrified by what they saw on the screen. Both boys' eyes bulged in amazement. Inhei turned around to see Minu running out of the internet cafe to come to Sue's aid. When he returned, he waited for a few seconds, but then decided to help Sue, 